Okay. I'm you and me. I'll hit me. Yeah, you're here. Hello, everybody. Release Christian. Release Christian. Release Christian. Release Christian. There we go. I had some volume on there for a second there. Hello, everybody. Yeah, look, we got the Zelda layout again, because that's the one I have. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's a good one. It's a good one. I, I, that's I, one up. We said we were going to commission a Resident Evil 4 one. We have to actually still do that. Yeah. Well, uh, let me see. Oh, you don't need to lower that. that, or you can do that. That's incredible. I can do that. Yeah. Um, I think right here is good for me. If you want to just sound your end. How does this sound to you guys listening uh, on YouTube? Yes. Keep in mind, this is yeah. starts out a little bit louder 100%. than our voices. Sounds good to me. Perfect. Great. Fantastic. Okay. Excellent. We got that. We got Wind game. It. Yep, and then uh, we do have a closest to the messy pin. Bob sent that over. Oh, fine. Uh, you might have to re you might have to reframe that when we get to that part. Well, we can take a break before it. I'll, f I'll just yeah, I'll stretch it. So it'll be fine. Okay, all right, be fine. I'm all really right. ready, and uh, I can hit the music. I think yeah, let's do it. All right, let's hit it in. Right. Yeah, are you recording, Christian? Uh, I I I'm gonna uh, give me a countdown, and I start recording. Five, four. It's the internet, you're busy, let's do this. Welcome to Game Mess Decides for February 1st, 2024. I am your host today, Mike Minotti, joined by... Sean Turbo, Sean McDowell. And today, are Xbox and PlayStation working on new handhelds? What did we think of the state of play? And we're going to decide the best fighting game guest characters ever. Uh, Sean, thank you so much for joining me. Jeff is, of course, uh, taking a bit of a break this week, watching uh, the kiddos, having all sorts of fun, I'm mm -hmm. sure. But how's your week going? Ooh, I'm a busy boy, Mike. Yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> me too. It's, it was a busy January for yeah. me, so I'm just coasted on into February here at the uh, end of this week. I'll finally have some right. time to relax. Yeah, I was yeah. really busy. And not in a way that, like, oh, Jeff, if you're listening, like, you should feel bad. It's, it's, if you being here would have had little to do with it. It was just for a mm. lot of reasons. I was very busy uh, this week, and there are just so many games to play. And I actually, yeah. I complained last year about it. Right now, at this moment, I almost feel worse than ever in terms of, oh, no. <laughs> like, I, like <laughs> I, I right now have two should be three big rpgs that i feel are necessary to play through yeah oh I'm, no <laughs> i'm in the same place mike yeah. uh, we had infinite wealth drop recently i've been trying to stay up on that since i'm you know kind of on the back burner for content on uh, giant bomb i just like to be up on everything uh, also i am actually like reviewing uh persona 3 reload oh wow this, so i had to <laughs> be up on that yeah no written reviews this is not the return of written reviews or anything like that but i should wow. be scheduling has been funky but i should be on uh, bcr tomorrow for our uh review cast well, for that i'm gonna be on that i'm not gonna be able to talk a whole ton about it i like just started okay. last night and my hope is to frankly stay up too late so i can play a good chunk of it tonight um you know yeah. you know I, i've been kind of mr switch even with all these other things coming out and I find like, no, we got to get the Roger ally really going here because I'm this is going <laughs> to like I'm not going to be playing my switch a whole lot probably for the next month because I'm going to really be playing Persona and then maybe Infinite Wealth on my Roger uh, if all goes according to plan. At least so far, yeah. Persona, uh, uh, Persona 3 running very well on my Roger. Uh, I'm actually kind of stoked about that it's, it's pretty yeah neat. and uh and we'll, we'll talk more about it at the end of the show of course but yeah it uh it's a steam deck verified game even uh pre-release and it's been running great for me since i got the code a couple weeks ago so yeah for some awesome. reason i think it's because like i played persona 3 when it came out on ps2 for a bit when i really played through it it was persona 3 portable uh so mm -hmm. i really like playing that game portably it, it makes me cozy in a way and and I, I was actually kind of a little wonderstruck playing this like man I played this game, you know, the PSP version, 
which was it had to be like downgraded from the PS2 version to even work as a handheld game. And now I'm just yeah. playing the real version of it on some handheld and that's just how it mm-hmm. works now. So it's uh it's pretty incredible and that actually kind of leads us into our first story here. Um Ooh. yeah, the a known hardware leaker Moore's Law is dead. It's saying that Sony is working on a non-streaming console that would natively uh support and play games that have a uh, custom AMD APU um, at least two years out. Technically not greenlit for launch yet. These are some of the details from Insider Gaming's report on this video. Um, So Sony has obviously released the PlayStation Portal not too long ago, which is a handheld but a streaming device. And kind of interestingly, when Tom Henderson of Insider Gaming was tweeting about this, he's like, uh, you know, I bet Microsoft is looking into it too. Well, then Jez Corden over at Windows Central just replied and said, they are. Now, that might be speculation on Jez's part, but Jez also does have some good insider information himself. But yeah, in some That's ways, true, yeah. like why, why this isn't necessarily a shocking thing. Why wouldn't both PlayStation and Xbox be interested in this market when the Switch has been a giant hit forever? And a lot of these uh, kind of portable computer devices like the Steam Deck, like the, the you know, the ROG Ally, have kind of been surprising. You know, the Steam Deck being uh, was a bigger hit than I think people even expected. But I don't think people expected the Roger Ally to be much of anything, and it seems to be doing really well. So why would you want to do this? Now, there's, I think, a concern of what exactly is this. Can you make a portable PlayStation 5 even in the next couple of years? Is that even possible? Mm-hmm. If not, what kind of games is it going to play? What do you think, Sean? So I think... Uh... <laughs> First of all, I will. Uh, I'm not trying to start any drama here or anything. Uh, the person this report comes from has not a spotless track record, I will say. So I think maybe even if there is some truth to this, maybe some details are a little bit off or something like that. Um, it would be an interesting move from PlayStation either way, though. I think that's the uh, discussion point that we should have here is like, what would this look like or how does it make sense for them? Uh, you you can't have a portable PS5 at this point. The, that's just not in the cards. But you could have a lower skew, as we know from uh, Microsoft and you know the whole Xbox approach right now with the Series X and the Series S. So I think I think Sony is at the very least probably keeping up on all this. And you know Mark Cerny and everyone uh, are. They always are working with something over there, trying to figure out the next thing for the PlayStation hardware. They're all, all these companies are doing this. They're always working on the next thing. And even if something doesn't pan out, maybe something like this is in development, you know? So uh, don't definitely don't expect like full on PS5 level graphics out of a handheld anytime soon like that or anything. But yeah, I think that lower skew is possible. Sure. Yeah, and again, that two-year timeline seems pretty ambitious just from my limited yeah. understanding of how capable you are of building a portable PlayStation 5. And if you have to downskew it, well, then you can run into problems with, well, are certain games that run on a native PlayStation 5 not going to be able to run on this? Right. So that's that could be a problem. But, you know, 10 years from now, like this is, this is what consoles are going to be, I think. I think there might yes. still be standalone ones like that only connect to a TV. I think the portable and dock format is going to become standard eventually. Certain, probably at by this point. Yeah, because it's basically working for everyone who's doing it and actually investing heavily into it. You know, there's side stuff like the L- Lenovo Legion Go. I don't think it's going to be the biggest thing in the world uh, or anything like that anytime soon. But, you know, the Switch, the Steam Deck, and these things are catching on. And I think we will reach a point eventually where even something like PlayStation, this will never happen with Nintendo, but even something like PlayStation will get hardware agnostic enough that they are like, yeah, you can play your PlayStation stuff everywhere. Maybe stuff comes to our big bad console first and then it trickles down, including like the PC and streaming and everything like that. But I think we will reach a point where you can have your home console that is the, you know, the powerhouse for people who don't want to build a PC and then you also have the handheld that's somewhere, you know, uh, for, for the more casual market that they can plug into their TV and everything. Uh, I think what is more I- interesting for me personally, at least, uh, this is something me and Jeff have talked about elsewhere before. I think Xbox is even more poised to do something here that is interesting 
because you know people have been talking forever about the the series s handheld you know just just take that chip cram it down into a handheld you're good like just slap a screen on that sucker that's never going to happen (laughs) that's literally impossible they can't do that because the series s draws way too much power from the wall for that to happen you you just slap a battery and a screen on a series s it would last for like 10 minutes but the tech is there that they could scale the chip down you know give it less oomph down clock what's already there or something like that and that would essentially be a third SKU. or we know from the ftc docs and everything like that they are looking at moving to arm chips which uh <laughs> again the short version of that mobile chips like they would be looking to move towards that basically you know switch uses an arm chip because a mobile device is basically a tablet i think Computing is moving in that direction as Apple has proven with all their stuff has moved over to ARM, just very beefy ARM stuff. I think if Microsoft's hanging in that direction, yeah, I could see them do something like that as well, right? Yeah, I think that makes sense. It's interesting with Microsoft because, I mean, like the raw ally is in some sense already a portable Xbox, right? Because you can just get PC Game Pass on there. Uh, And, you know, Mm -hmm. all Microsoft's games uh, come to PC right away. Anyways, but why not, you know, have Microsoft or Xbox make an Xbox branded one of those? It, I, yeah. You know, I think that would just immediately sell better than anything but the Switch. I think it could also help them catch up a little bit in the hardware space. You know, Microsoft had their recent financials. And while their gaming revenue is up because of the Activision, you know, uh, uh, buyout there, they're they're kind of struggling on the console sales side right now, and you know. Right. I, now, on the other hand, we've we've heard, um, you know, Phil Spencer say things like, you know, they're de-emphasizing the console space, so they want to make more yeah. consoles, but it's also they want to meet players where they are. Well, there's a new space, you can meet them. Do you meet them on these existing devices, or do you make your own bespoke one? Exactly, and I think uh, I mean we also know. Uh, well, first of all, they, there have been rumblings about a version of Windows that is more tailored towards handhelds. They've like worked on this in like internal uh, project jams or whatever you call that. But also, they've done stuff with. Um, uh, how do I put this uh, for a way everyone will understand, including you? Uh, basically, desktop to ARM translation layer. Okay. So basically, uh, playing full size console games on an ARM chip. In the same way that, you know, like um, uh, Steam Deck has Proton that makes yes. Windows games run on Linux. Yes. Basically, they they are working on stuff like that that makes uh, desktop x86 applications run on ARM mobile chips. So they're, they're moving in that direction from a Windows side of things that will inevitably trickle down to Xbox in some way since, you know, the two are linked. You know, the, the Xbox is still basically a PC. It does run a variant of Windows. So there's there's that there. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think the industry is moving in this direction. It's just a question of how everyone ap- approaches things. And like you were saying, and people are in the chat are saying, for right now, Microsoft is probably perfectly happy with you buying a Windows handheld like the Roger Ally, playing your Game Pass games on there. But then when they are ready, it wouldn't surprise me at all for them to come in with their own thing as well. Yeah, I, I just wonder if like, again, 10, 15 years from now, like every console is just basically like a switch and it's you know it's one of those things where like, again yeah, nintendo had the d-pad first and they did the shoulder buttons and the mm-hmm. analog stick and rumble pack and then they were the first ones to have the docked console thing and now that's just what everybody does uh, right. eventually it probably will be like that but i don't think the the, the the home console boxes are going away super soon for sure and i'm not sure yeah if you know we're going to see the playstation 5 portable in two years or the xbox series portable in two years either but maybe uh, hey, thank you so much to everybody who is watching live. I see that we got a bunch of Super Chats already. We are going to read all of those later in the show, so keep sending them. We really appreciate it. And, uh, but you've hit that thumbs up button. Also, very helpful for the show, so thank you for doing that. If you haven't, please consider hitting that thumbs up button. All right, Sean, we didn't get to participate in the um, Giant Bomb State of Play talk over, so now's our <laughs> chance to, to say Hell what yeah. we think. Because I mean, I, I know, they all seemed uh, really uh, in, into and in love with that Death Stranding two trailer, uh, officially called Death Stranding two on the beach. Uh-huh. Um, look, I don't, I don't want to be Mister Party Pooper over here, but it, it's starting to get a bit much for me, Sean. It's starting all to right. get a bit much. 
You know what, Mike? Yeah. Those who know me know I try to be a positive guy. I try to be nice to the best of my ability. I'm going to let loose for once. Kojima's head is so far up his own (laughs) ass, and I fucking hate it, Mike. I hate it so much. It it drives me a little... you know, it's I so complained before. Everything about that well, trailer was just so pretentious. It's, 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 it's kind of pretentious. To me, it's getting so close to just being like, lol, that's so random. Like, uh, yeah. this wacky character like has a guitar shooting laser beams. Like, All right, you know what? You know what? I'll, I'll give it up. The, yeah. the, well, you the like that because it reminds you of like revenge and stuff, but I guess Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. There's a part of me, if I had Jeff here, I'd be yelling at him because Jeff's like, I love this so much. You don't yeah. even like Death Stranding. There's there's never been a better week for Jeff to be out and me and you to do a podcast again. Like, this is right. great. Someone in the like, chat said, Kojima needs a no guy. And that's why I've been saying for years yeah. now, Kojima is best with an editor. Like the, the best games ever made is still Mel Your Solid 1. Because it, it, people rain him yeah. in a little bit. What was that? Yeah, they think. They kept him on my leash, like they, they yeah. didn't like let him go like super crazy like he's going now. They have yeah. like apparently blank check from Sony for to do whatever the fuck he wants. So Oh yeah, and that, that's a, he's he's an amazing writer who just desperately needs an editor. That's then, that's my opinion on it. Then he have that he had that quote towards the end of the broadcast. He's like, I wanna uh, blur the lines or merge the lines between film and games. And I yeah. my eyes just about exploded out of my head. I rolled them so hard. First off, why? Who cares? Second off, you did that like 20 years ago already. What are you talking about? Like it happened. Yeah, I, uh, I have the quote here from the video. Uh, he announced a new action espionage game in collaboration with Sony. And yeah, piss ants. Sony Pictures? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. It new- will apparently be a movie in terms of looks, story, theme, cast, acting, fashion, and sound, and will transcend the barriers between film and games. I'm like... I feel like we just had him on stage saying something like this, didn't we? I mean, he's, I mean, he's, I, mean, I don't know how big his studio is, but he's making Death Stranding 2, the Microsoft game, which is like apparently going to use the cloud or something. And, yeah, and that's, now that's, this, this, uh, this either, well, here's the question. It's either a Metal Gear Solid game or it seems more likely it is actually a new IP he could be lying. He's done that before. All right. They like said, they Solid said 5. something to the effect of new IP. Yeah. Right. But Metal Gear Solid 5 it, but. was supposed to just be a new IP also. And mm-hmm. that was a lie. Yeah. Right. We'll Which I, we'll I'm not see. mad about that. Whatever. The marketing. So, you know, we'll see what this is. But yeah, I, I look, I guess just uh, something with Kojima with just um, I'm tired of him constantly showing up. Like and then it's I don't know. I get this impression like I'm he, I'm supposed to applaud or something. And again, I can't. Yeah, uh, I, I that, can't. Think that of, is the, one thing that Jeff said uh, during the, the talk over that I wholeheartedly agreed with, but he was saying it for kind of different reasons. Um, Kojima's new projects are always like the Emperor's new clothes. Like, what are you going to do? Tell him that he's being a ridiculous idiot? No, you're going to be like, oh, this is Kojima. He's the best game maker in the world. We must say yes to this. It's right. like, someone needs to say no, man. Yeah, <laughs> like, and look, I mean, like, I'm sorry if I'm being hard, but nobody has gotten more flowers in terms of like a game developer, besides yeah. from maybe Shigeru Miyamoto. No one's gotten yeah. more flowers than Kojima, uh, so Man. so it's fine. Hey, look, I, I this it looks like a very proficient game. Uh, there's definitely some of the wackiness I like. I like the weird low frame rate puppet. It's nonsense. Cool. The puppet cool. is the absolute coolest thing in that entire trailer. I it's like it's a weird idea, but it's like you know what? That's that's the kind of thing where I'm like, right. you got a like but, low frame rate puppet in there. Fuck it. That's but, the kind of thing I get bored with. I, I did prefer it when like you could at least pretend to explain it all, even if the explanation is basically law nano machines, which isn't great. Yeah. At least Machine something. Sun, yeah. that, that was always my thing with Death Stranding. And, you know, I know some people like, ah, oh, just don't worry about it. Just accept you're not going to know what's going on. Yeah. I kind of want to know what's going on at least a little and, bit. I don't think yeah, he, not, I don't think. I don't. I, I don't think Kojima knows. Like, I don't think he knows what's going on on his, his game. <laughs> right? Like, for for real, I think he should like see stuff on like on like the internet that he, he thinks is cool, and he doesn't like dive deeper on it. He just has this like surface understanding of some topic, <laughs> and then he just put it on the game. And it's like, yeah, it sounds cool, but I don't really know. I was just gonna make this shit up. And yeah, just, like, I think you're right, Chris. I think he's, sort of, about that. he's sort of writing as he goes. Uh, no, okay, not to just dunk on Death Stranding here. The last like real thing I have to say about is when we get to the gameplay, as far as I can tell, it's gonna be more Death Stranding. It's gonna be holding forward on an analog stick and then occasional okay gunplay. Like, 
I don't know, man. Like, just to end all this, like, you know, hooray for the people who are super into this. Like, hey, y'all got your weird stuff. And I'm a proponent of weird stuff. You know what? Let people do their thing in the game's space. But this is just very much not for me, Mike. And I just I just can't get on board with it. Yeah, and there's... I think overall, like, not to, like, go ahead. I think this was a good presentation, but perhaps a yeah. lack of things that are kind of specifically my thing, I'll, I'll say, sort of up front. But a lot of good-looking games. In fact, um, I thought Team Ninja's Rise of Ronin actually looked better than I was expecting and more ambitious than I was Same. Yeah. expecting. Um, Like, you, you know, it, it definitely has some of those Souls-like elements, but it seems to be a bit more of an action-adventure game, like, you know, it has some Tsushima vibes, but even some, like, o- old school or, like, older PS1 ninja games reminds me a little bit of that. Um, so, yeah, I thought that was pretty impressive. And, hey, Team Ninja usually does a good job with these kinds of games. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I'm i at the point where these type of, like, you know, action adventure games aren't doing a lot for me right now. Mm-hmm. But I think the traversal and everything... It, it did enough for me where I'm like, okay, you know, I go from like get uh get up into the air and then you can do the the gliding and then you the ride a horse nice. and everywhere. Yeah, I think the the movement looked good enough to me that I'm like, all right, I'm intrigued, I'm interested, but I'm not like running out to play uh, Rise of the Ronin when it releases March 22nd. I think yep. that was new information. I'm not sure. Yeah, pretty soon uh, until Dawn is getting a remaster. Uh, not something I played before. Yeah. I know I'm not. I'm, really? I'm, I'm in my big boy phase now, so maybe I'll check out the remaster. I, still, I don't feel super drawn to it per se, but oh, Mike, we've we've like been it. talking about doing a uh, a group playthrough. Like, okay, yes. oh, that'd you, be fun. Yeah, you ought to be in on that. It it is yes. the is such a good game for like uh, it gives you just enough time that like the person playing it can listen to like a committee that they're playing with, and if everyone just quickly votes like you know no or yes, and then like they make oh, the decision based on right, that, right. it's a real fun time with that. Okay. Uh, for a couple Halloweens in a row, me and some friends did that where we did a couple of playthroughs of Until Dawn like that. Yes, what's up? The, is this is this happening because they're making a uh, like a movie of this or like a show? Well, I just, mean, just like eh, maybe. I think this is just more PlayStation stuff coming to PC, yeah. and it if it's coming to PC, why not bring it to PS5 as well? Um, Stellar Blade got a, a deep dive. This is kind yeah. of uh, this is from developer Shift Up. It's kind of you know they're they're gonna make their own near Automata, right? With um, yeah, but Anetta. But Anetta, right? Yes, we are in the post-apocalyptic future, but we still have thigh cleavage, so don't worry, everybody. <laughs> um, Do they have vagina bones? What about vagina bones? We don't Do know about the them? vagina bones. Uh, oh damn! Hey, I mean, look, it's it obviously looks like it looks like a you know one of those a lot, but it looks mm-hmm. fun enough. I it, it might have some good qualities to it. it. Just has to escape feeling super generic, right? It, it has to somehow be more uh, lies of P and less. I don't know what some generic souls like nobody remembers, but you know what I mean? Not that this is a souls like, but in terms of being something that seems derivative at first glance, but still, you know, oh, sure. pretty, it looks competent. Yeah. Unlike a certain other game that's been recent right now, which is just ripping off in our game. This is the definition of inspired by something else. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of near automata in there. There's a lot of Bayonetta in there, but you know what? Just more character action games. Screw it. Give them to me. Like, I'm, I'm on board. I, I love this kind of stuff. You know, like, I'm big into Bayonetta, DMC. Right. Mel Gear Rise is one of my favorite games of all time. You like, never stop yeah, talking I'm, about I'm Final Fantasy 16. I'm, <laughs> I, I, am I the only person at Giant Bomb who had that on my top 10 of the year? I might have been. <laughs> I think, I, I can't remember if Jan ended up putting it on or not. I think he ended up not. I think he ended up not. I think it may have been uh, yeah. just you. Uh, Capcom uh, had another trailer for Dragon's Dogma 2, which is coming out March 22nd. I think this game is looking fantastic. I am pretty excited for uh, this. Fuck yeah, let's fucking go. <laughs> Apparently people I'm are so excited high. for it. I can't uh, yeah, I I downloaded the first one. I still haven't played it yet because we've so much to play right now. But I'm I'm looking forward to it. Like th- this is another one. This is sort of in the same vein as like Rise of the Ronin, where I'm like, yeah, this is the kind of game I don't need to get into right now. But if I get to it eventually, you know, if I get a code for it, if I get it on sale or something like that, I'll check it out probably later in the year. Is I think it was gonna be for me. I'm not I'm not running to Dragon's Dogma too. But uh, yeah, people seem to like. People seem to uh, really enjoy the first one, sort of a cult classic-y thing, and they like what they see from uh, from this new one. Yeah. 
Sonic Cross Shadow Generations was announced by Sega. So this is a remaster of Sonic Generations with new content featuring Shadow the Hedgehog coming out this fall for basically all of the platform. Sonic Generations is, I'm not a giant fan of the boost era Sonic game, Sean, but Generations is definitely the best of them. Oh, uh, it's know. by far the best one. Yeah, yeah. I like the whole it know, is. nostalgia trip, obviously. Yeah, I know you like um, uh, Frontiers more, right? Probably, ultimately, but uh, there are highs in Generations that are better for me. Like, yeah. the boost level for, say, Sky Sanctuary with that music playing is pretty incredible. Mm-hmm. Like, the way I play this is usually how I play, actually, speaking of Metal Gear Rising, that game, where I do, like, a self-imposed, almost boss rush mode. But, as you mentioned uh, on Twitter, I saw the other day, boss is not great in Generations. The bosses were terrible in Generations. Yeah. <laughs> that was a that I, final boss was awful. How I usually play is I just, I love the boost uh, Sonic so much that I just try, I just do all the boost levels in a row since, you know, I have a complete save file. So I just play all those in a row. I'm like, this is like 20 or 30 minutes. I try to get good times on and everything. I just have a good time. It it is funny as well because I, you know, I just said, you know, I prefer Genesis Sonic to boost era Sonic. But in this game, the boost levels definitely are more fun. Uh, oh yeah, I don't know. They're, I don't they're know almost exactly like a is. treat after you finish like the more uh, traditional platforming of yeah. the Genesis Sonic. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'm looking forward to this. I'm interested to see what exactly this like little shadow campaign looks like. Yeah, it, uh, yeah. That's the fun. That's the funny thing. Like this kind of seems a little against Sega's mo to like not just remaster a game and bring it back, but to add basically well, what looks like a new little campaign. I think you kind of, I think you might need to more for this one than for Colors. Colors was a game that was never in HD before, so just true. Up, just enhancing it a bit was good enough. Yeah. Um, this is a game you can still just buy on Steam. It's going to look pretty good. That yeah, that's the thing. I think you, you know, you know what you're right. This game needed something special because, and you know, this showing up in a PlayStation presentation made sense because. This is the platform that benefits most because uh, the PC version, like I mentioned, still good. I still play it all the time. And it's uh, gotten backwards compatibility boost on Xbox, so they don't really need it. So this is, you know, PlayStation and Switch gamers. Hey, this, this one's for you. Is it coming to Switch? Mm-hmm. I assumed it was. It is coming to Switch. Okay, um, there you go. Yeah. So a couple of Silent Hill uh, things. First off, Silent Hill, the short message got shadow dropped. That day, mm-hmm. this is kind of like a 90 minute experience free free to download kind of trying to recapture that pt magic i haven't tried it it doesn't seem to be exactly blowing people away or anything like that uh but you know it's i guess it's a nice nice little surprise it's a weird one because the the way to describe it is um it's a showcase of what the future could hold for silent hill and i'm like what the what the does fuck that does that even mean yeah, yeah apparently like, it might be related PT. to the movie somehow mm, uh I, I don't know what's up with that that web show there when they're like what's like uh like oh, everyone hated it people voted it's bad what yeah. was that everyone hated I, it. I watched Did it that happen? yeah, it yeah I, I think it's still happening i don't i don't know if it's Jesus. still happening or what it is i i know a horror streamer who uh, uh leans a little more into the campy side of horror so that's why i like watching them but like, yeah, he's been firing it up and like catching up on it. He's like, oh, this is bad. <laughs> and I watched it. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is bad. Holy cow. And then we also did get to see uh, like some real gameplay of the Silent Hill 2 uh, remake. Sean, what did you think of this? Um, I have very little opinion of it. I'm like, hey, it looks pretty good graphically. Yeah. But I've never I've, I've just never been a Silent Hill kind of guy. <laughs> like, I'm. I think, you know, I'm not a huge horror guy in general, but uh, I, I've always been more into like the RE side of things. Like. Well, sure. Uh, I, you know, I, I did play Silent Hill 2 back in the day. Uh, so like Christian's yelling at chat like, oh, it looks terrible. I must, I see a lot of people say yeah. that. I thought it looked fine. Uh, no, I looked yeah. like, uh, I'm sorry. It's just like, what is this? It's just, it looks awful. Like. That's yeah, no Silent it looks, Hill. I like, don't know. It looks kind of well, like Silent like Hill to me. Well, gameplay, sure. I, 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 I literally like, meant like The whole aesthetic like. is so bad. I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah. I'm I don't not, maybe I'm not... I'm not like... I'm not deep enough in the Silent, Silent Hill weeds. Yeah. Well, people that die hard about Silent Hill, they are really are die hard. Like, they, it's like extreme. But I, I, even I, like, that I'm not that crazy. I was like, this is just... This is... A catastrophe. What are they doing? We'll see. I I wasn't getting catastrophe vibes. I think it looks yeah, fine. No. I mean, look, compared to like what Capcom's been able to do. Yeah. Sure. It's not gonna measure up to that. And it's hey, true, look, yeah. no. it maybe if we're we're all hoping that the uh, Silent Hill 2 remakes would be as good as like Resident Evil 4 remake, ah, maybe we should give up on that. But 
I, I don't know. I, Silent Hill 2 is a game that people are so into, I, I, you know, and I get the complaints against Bloober Team, but I also kind of feel bad for them. I don't know if they can win. Uh, like they, Because if they deliver a 7 out of 10 game or an 8 out of 10 game, which shouldn't be the end of the world, they're going to get crucified <laughs> for it. People are going to freak out. To be fair, their track record is not good. It's not and even I know someone, and as someone who doesn't play that kind of game, even I know that. <laughs> We got a new look at Judas. This is Ken Levine's uh, new game. Ken Levine, the creator of Bioshock, uh, first mm-hmm. new game in a very long time, like 12 years. Um, he's making a Bioshock. Yeah, this is just Bioshock, right? Like- yeah, to a point that it's actually a little like, and like, I don't know why that bothers me, because I like Bioshock, especially Bioshock yeah. 1 a lot. But it's <laughs> definitely probably like, man, like, we're not really doing like, too much different uh- here at all, huh? I, 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 I watched the um, state of play. How I usually do is, you know, I'll watch it like for work or whatnot. And then I'll watch it with my normie friends where like I sort of skim through it. And I'm like, oh, hey, here's a game announcement you might want to see. Like, here's the trailer for it. I for this one, I was like, you know what? Let me try this one. And I put it at the middle of the trailer. I'm like, can anyone guess like w- what maker is like the creative team behind this? And they're like, that's Bioshock. <laughs> and I was like. Hey, see, even the normies can see, like, yeah, they're just making a new Bioshock. Just make, and that's what he wants to do. I mean, hey, why not? Uh, you know, uh, we haven't gotten an actual new sure. Bioshock. Supposedly, they're they're working on it. Uh, I don't know who that, I don't know who this sassy blonde teenager is, who I think is the villain. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's, that's something. I just see a picture of her with a hat that says "I shamed Judas." So yeah. Uh, We're in an age where, uh, you know, Ichiban Kaska is like at having beef with a VTuber. Anything can happen. And uh, like. <laughs> great, she was just a VTuber. Actually, I think I, yeah. I think I'd like that. Well, um, hey, you know, I, I, I feel kind of like I don't know why. Like for some reason, it rubs me the wrong way. I bet once I'm playing this, I'm going to be happy to have a, a new Bioshock S game. Uh, we'll see. Or maybe uh, Ken Levine will continue his downward spiral since Bioshock, right? Like, I mean, Infinite was not as good as Bioshock, and maybe this won't be as good as Infinite. I don't know. It's been a very long time. Could be. Could be. We'll see. That was a lot of the big stuff. There was surprisingly a couple VR games. Hey, Dave the Diver's giving Godzilla content. There's another, you know, Hoyoverse. But that's the big stuff. Unless there's anything else that stuck out to you or people want to talk about in Super Chat, we can. But yeah, there were quite a few games there. Uh, So I I did enjoy the presentation overall. Again, nothing that's like super Mikey-ish except for maybe Dragon's Dogma, I guess, Sonic Generation. I suppose. Oh, by about, the way, I looked it up. Yes. I, I didn't put two and two together. Um, Stellar Blade is being made by the team that does Nikkei. You know that uh, that mobile game? Nikkei, no. Have you ever? Just another moisturizer <sighs> game. Girls shooting guns and you watch yep. her jiggling butts from. Yes, the- it oh, is. I've seen, I've seen. I've seen gift of this. Yeah. Yes. This yeah. Is- yeah. I was like, oh, this explains a lot now. Okay. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Oh, and, and by- I was saying in chat that. This is one of those games I will be embarrassed to play against in front of like uh, uh, like normies. Special, like, I special like, Nick is uh, yeah. in chat there saying, "Yeah, yes, yes, Nick, you next did have pretty much the entire state of play uh, ahead of time, which is a good thing because yeah. it allowed me to prepare uh, covering it pretty easily." <laughs> so thank you for that, Nick. Ah, uh, all right. Why don't we take a break now? We'll come back. We'll read some super chats, and we then we got a couple games we got to play. Sounds good. All right, I'm ready to yes, just right. go. Whenever. Michael Larry says, I, I, bet, I bet you have, yes, I do have it. It's on my phone right now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Listen, I played time. it when they did the uh, the Nier Automata crossover because I was like, I want to see what this I'm, is all about. Just took the week off, Nick. Oh, oh, boy. Neuralink in my brain. I'm going to just play that game all the time. All right, uh, you, right you, you good to do the Super Chats, Sean? You want me to? I could, I could just do um, Why do you let me do you got, You're doing okay, the games. Sure. That's fine. You want to? Yeah, I do want to. All right. All right, if you want to, let's go back in it. And we're back. We're going to start reading some super chats here. First one's from Afro Ahmed, who says, Is it just me, or does Ko- uh, Kojima only cast white actors for his games? He knows other people exist on this planet, right? Like, I didn't I haven't, <laughs> I didn't play enough of uh, Death Stranding to really have an opinion on this. I could kind of take your word for it. Uh, that's, that, that seems There's right, though. There are a lot though. of white people in that game. <laughs> there are a lot of white people in Death Stranding, huh? Yeah, in a lot of his games in general, there there tends to be a lot of uh, yes, you have, you know, a lot but, of like people in uh, third world countries. He's working with also, Jordan Peele, yeah. yeah. So you know, hey, maybe maybe we well, we'll, <laughs> should we do it? I don't know. And uh, 
The Toros, not really. You know, I, I don't know. I don't. I know. just don't want to touch this one too much. It's yeah, fine. Yeah, you know what? It's I don't fine. have anything to say. Sure, yeah, Sean, no. elaborate. Okay, yeah, Christian, you can, Christian. Let me ask you, Christian. Is yes. Hideo Kojima racist? Um, he has a black friend. He can't be racist. All right, now let's move <laughs> yeah, on to the next it. super yeah. chat. Willow let's Davis go. says, "Power World, 19 million players. Uh, best-selling Mega Man, 1.7 million. I don't know why Will Davis is trying to hurt me. <laughs> I don't know what I did. Yeah, you personally. Will- hey. I have all these things, yeah. Uh, that's a lot. That is a lot of players. I mean, some of them are playing on Game Pass, but um, a lot of them bought in. Those people are just sure rich did. now, right? Like they're just filthy rich and don't have to worry about money. Oh anymore. yeah, it's a small team, so they're they're just, they're just as rich. long as they play their cards right. Yeah, they're set. Like I, I mean, granted, we'll see how that trickles down. Like maybe it's one or two people are rich and the rest are well, working for scraps. Who knows how that works? But yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of money going through that studio for sure. Ariel Delgado says, I've only known that puppet for one day, and it's already my favorite Ko- uh, Kojima character game of the year 2025 for me. Oh, that, that's coming out 2025. Um, a lot of games are going to be coming out 2025. What did you think? Um, we, we didn't have a lot of first party Sony stuff necessarily, or at least, you know, we had exclusives. Uh, yeah. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is getting its own state of play. Uh, Death Stranding 2. I'm looking forward to that, yeah. Right. But, like, in terms of, like, you know, where's the next Sucker Punch game, right? Or, or you know, something like that. Not necessarily much there. It might be light, at least on that side of things, for PlayStation yeah. this year. I think they'll have plenty of games, but in terms of that kind of stuff. I mean, I think people are just learning AAA games are expensive and take time. Take we're very, learning very that here. Time. We're learning that on the Xbox front. We're learning yeah. that a lot. Even Nintendo, you know, Tears of the Kingdom took freaking forever to come out. Like, that's just where we're at Ed. now. And, yeah. Uh, Willow Davis, oh no, excuse me, Connell Wood said, send in the quants. <laughs> Thank you, Connell Wood. <laughs> uh, Willow Davis says, Sean put this towards growing a cool mustache. I actively shave every day because I'm sorry, that just doesn't, I, you I would need every to day? put You like, have a little five o'clock shadow on there right now, even. It wants to come out, Sean. I know, and I will not let it <laughs> <I> grow <laughs> very you're, scraggly. You're your Mexican jeans, you're holding back. Let that nah. be, let, let that baby rock. Come on. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. yeah I, 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 I get the little, I get the little stash here and then patch everywhere nice. else. Nah, no way, no way. I, I keep saying I want a ghost stash only, and everybody yells at me and says I'm not allowed to. I don't know. Whatever. No, you look like a porn You're star. gonna go to jail. What was that? Yeah. Go to jail. <laughs> mm, I think stashes are back, and I'm gonna rock it at some point. You're just mm. gonna have to deal with it when it happens. Uh, mm. Zoomer says Sean's face is almost as attractive as his voice. Uh, how come people don't Thank tell me how attractive you. I am? Actually, they do sometimes. There you go. Yeah. Oh, okay. Grug says, I'll if you that. can only use what was available at the time, get you buy a player's guide for Mortal Kombat Mythologies. It's like $15 to $20 on eBay. <laughs> um, I'm sure. No, I'm sure Dan would definitely not like it. I mean, to be clear, Game Facts also existed <laughs> when Mortal Kombat Mythology was out. I was using. Barely. Yeah. yeah. I was using Game Facts in like 97 for games. Uh, definitely. Like I'm, the game facts I wrote was for the Game Boy Camera, so that was like '98. Nice, uh, right? So I think yeah. ruled. By the way, that was actually a very fun little device. There are a oh, lot yeah. of mini games on there. It was yeah. great. I, in, some, in some ways, I'm okay figuring it out, but there's definitely a point where if I tell Grub I, to tell me what to do, he's you need, and he understands. He could tell me. Yeah, what to do. I will say I did genuinely look uh, try. I tried to find the um the there's a Brady Games guide for that game. I did try to find a scan of it so that way we could give uh, you like period accurate hints. But that, unfortunately, that would be yeah, pretty good. I would like to get one actually at some point. It would be pretty. I mean, look without. A guide or somebody told me there is just no way you would figure out how to survive that final Fujin attack. It's insane. That's the kind of thing where it would take you like weeks of just trying right. every little thing and you just lose patience. Yeah, yeah it'd be no. dumb. Yeah. Uh, Mikey Leary says, I'm going to get you that Starfall Racers coaster. I'm going to get you on that Starfall Racers coaster at Epic Universe, Mike. This is a threat. No, you're not. I'm not <laughs> sure if I'm going on the Tron coaster, which is one based on a movie I really liked, and two, not nearly as big as the. Uh, Starfall Racers Coaster, which, if you don't know, is kind of a racing uh, coaster that's going to be in the center area of that new Universal theme park in Orlando, the one that is also going to have their Super Nintendo world. But uh, you can go ahead and try it, Mikey. Uh, and then Jerostin says, please just give us a remaster of Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 or a Sonic Adventure 3, but I am very hyped for Sonic Cross Shadow Generations. I mean, Sonic 1 and 2 did have remasters. They're on the GameCube. Uh, but I know what you mean. They're, at some point, they should they should repackage those games. I don't know. Those games could benefit from full remakes in some ways, but I, I think people kind of like the uh, jankiness of those 
the weird cutscenes. They scenes, do. You do. The characters. <laughs> you open, like them. The, I know. The characters, like, talking over each other because they're just playing, yeah. like, dot .wave files, like, whenever they want to because it's poorly translated. Yeah, you know, I'll make you eat those words. Yeah. Yeah. Sonic's, yeah. Sonic's mouth and eyebrows and Sonic Adventure 1 just being completely out of control. <laughs> Stuff like that. Yeah. Um, It'll do something with those two games eventually, and maybe even Heroes, uh, maybe even Shadow the Hedgehog. Ooh, I bet yeah, they do that heroes. before. What's that? Bring back Heroes, the best mm. 7 out of 10 ever. <laughs> mm. I do want to play it again at some point. Uh, it's not like after this, they're going to go to Sonic and the Lost World or Sonic Forces, right? So they might have to go backward. Okay. All right, Mike, call your shot. If they do another one of these, what's the next one? I think they would go back to Sonic Adventure 1, actually. They're not, going so? to, they're not going to Lost World. Doing another remaster, they're going to go all the way back to Sonic Adventure One. Hmm. That's my that's my that's my shot. What's your shot? I I actually think it would be Lost World. Lost World. Just to give it a second chance. I guess like my only my only thing there is like Lost World's bad. You know what? Actually, I think would be before anything else. Hmm. I think they'll go back to Unleashed. I think they'll give <sighs> Unleashed uh, a remaster. People. I've come around to unleash. I still think it's bad, but a lot of it's people one want that. half of a good game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Unfortunately, that half is like 10% of the game. Right. But I mean, yeah. that game is using the engine that colors and generations uses. So it True. wouldn't be the hardest thing in the world. That'll be next. They'll do unleashed. Yeah, that's probably right. Actually. Burrito says, Hey Mike, just want to say let's motherfucking go on your triumph over level two in mortal Kombat. Send in the quads. Thank you, burrito. Thank you. Everybody <laughs> who's been watching that. It has been, it's been a lot, but it's also been a lot of fun. So I appreciate it. Layers has a question for Turbo Sean. What no. do you think is the correct next Pokemon project that Game Freak should do? And what do you actually think they'll announce? I mean, Game Freak internal. I wouldn't. I think uh, next up are in <laughs> some order. All right, Penny, tell us what you think. Um, I think a Legends game is in the cards. Like Arceus was received very well and performed well. And of course, they're working on Gen 10. Like we're we're gonna get Gen Ten at some point, absolutely. Um, I I'm curious what's going on. There's Mike Black and White. Something is going to happen. They're going to have to remake point. it. Like, of course they're going yeah. to. It's not like they're gonna stop there. And, but it's just what, you, if, what is it? Yeah, I forget where I said this, but people haven't heard. They are absolutely doing. Uh, they're hinting at Black and White stuff all over the oh, place. Really? Like it's in uh, Scarlet and Violet DLC. Like you go to Unova and stuff. Right. And that's uh, pretty the card game is bringing back a bunch of black and white mechanics. And that's Pokemon happened before, characters. before the remakes come out where they kind of bring stuff or yeah. key stuff from that they're, gen. They're getting, yeah, all the different parts of the IP that converge on something again. And it feels like black and white might be it. There's, there's also been a lot of like gen two stuff. And well, is gold that... and silver's 20th, fifth anniversary. That, is coming that's what up. I was going to ask you. Like, what about the let's play series? Is that going to come back in oh, let's some go. kind of, uh, let's go, excuse me. The yeah. let's go series. Is that going to come let's back? Go Johto some... would be sick. That'd be sweet. Cause yeah, let's go. Togepi. Uh, let's go. Let's yeah. Let's go Pikachu and Eevee. Those are good games. Like I, I like actually those really games actually. Those. Like I was, yeah. They're probably my, I mean, uh, Legends Arceus liked a lot, but I liked, I liked Let's Go uh, Pikachu and Eevee more than I liked Same. Scarlet and Violet or Sword and Shield, to be honest. Ooh, mm, I would say uh, I like them more in Sword and Shield, but like Scarlet and Violet, uh, no, your ass performance aside, yeah. I, I'm not crazy. I know it I runs know. like butt. It's I a know. fun game, but uh, that's, they, we need to move on from that one because I'm not going to let that one down. Jerry says, did Grub take the week off to avoid having to explain why a new Ridge Racer wasn't at state of play? Um, look, it, we never we never knew if it would be there <laughs> or not. And Jeff is probably still deep in his investigation. Let's be fair here. He has plenty of time to still come back. And it would to never us. have been a state of play because they're bringing back Ridge Racer 8 for Switch. It's going to happen. God, they're just so going to resurrect that. God, if if. if I think I, there would act. I'd actually maybe the only thing I'd be more excited about than the next 3D Mario game as a Switch U launch title would be if it was a Ridge Racer, especially Ridge Racer as a launch title. That just always hits, right? Because it it did that so it's often. It's what they like to do. Yeah. Oh, ah, oh, be so sick. Got to be awesome. <laughs> All right, that's it with the super tester now. Thank you so much, everybody, for sending those in. Really appreciate it. Let's uh, let's take another break here. We're gonna get set up to do yeah. closest to the messy pin, everybody. Oh, yeah. Break. All okay, right. l- let me see. So I will have to I don't to think go. Kojima is racist. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could have said that. 
<laughs> he's not racist. He's just uh, okay. Okay. Know. Okay. Yeah. No. I don't think he's racist. Straight up racist. But <laughs> the, he did grow up in Japan. In Japan, oh, has sure. Some yes. Yes. I think race I, and, like, I'm sure yeah, he's not racist. thinking about like uh, it would. You know, I should be including uh, more yes, in, people of yeah, color. People I'm sure that's color, not. Yeah. yeah. I don't think yeah. that's coming to his yeah. head. Inclusion, Which yeah, maybe is not very should valued. be in the back of his head somewhere. But yeah, I just I just think that's the problem. Yeah, it's just not there. It's just not there. But. Yeah. That's, yeah. Whatever. It is what Whatever. It is. Yeah, I might. Not... Uh, I have it pulled up. Yeah, you might yeah. just have to reformat. Yeah. Let's we'll see. It might not might look quite as clean as when Jeff does it, everybody. But we're gonna do our best. Okay. She. She. She's. Yeah. The shift. Shift sucks. She's an idiot. Am I right? What an idiot. <laughs> what a stupid motherfucker. Fuck that <laughs> Jeff guy. Yeah. Who needs him? <laughs> Shiv Grump. Get the fuck out of here. Absolutely. No, I realized today, um, Mike Wayne brought this handheld thing and I saw it be the thumbnail for the episode. I was like, I didn't know this happened. Because <laughs> <laughs> Game S Warnings didn't happen this week. So I'm yeah, like, oh, shit, I, need to go, I need to go do research. <laughs> All right. I the got it. The director of Destiny left. Do you know that? Yeah. Oh, the like, director? Wait, what? Luke Smith? Or somebody no, else? not the director. The, um, the series, Destiny 2's, like, the big guy. Whatever. I don't oh. know if it's the director, but one of the like heads President? just oh. left. Okay. Joe Blackburn? Mm. Joe Blackburn left uh, Bungie is what you mean? Okay. After the next update. Check. Why? It sounds, seems like it's so much fun to work there right now. It seems like they're really happy with uh, PlayStation's uh, taking control over there. Anyways. Uh, yeah. Jo- yes. Game director. Uh, Joe Blackburn left. Yes. Okay, then. Okay. All right. It, no, don't worry about it, Grub. You're, no, absolutely not. We would never. All right, we ready? Yes. Ready? Yeah, here we go. And we're back. Sean gets to play closest to the messy pin today. Isn't that fun? Yeah, not just hosting. This should be fun. Let's see. I think I'm going right. uh, to put you, put you not back into the mod hole, but into a hole of some kind with my oh, stellar performance. Oh, great. Mike's going to bury gross, me tonight. It's going to be wonderful. Anyways, that's right. We're back once again. Everyone's favorite game show with them podcast. Closest to the messy pin. We have another special guest edition as we tend to when one of the Beef and Cherry Boys is not around. So we'll see what Benji Bop cooked up for us tonight, Mike. Uh, the rules, quick reminder for everyone. Every round, we'll be given a certified retro game that's 10 years or older. we got to predict its Metacritic score on Metacritic.com. We'll use a closest to pin scoring system, so the difference between our guess and the correct answer will be accumulated at the end of every round. At the end of the game, the lowest total score wins. You know, golf pun, golf rules. If we get it dead on, by the way, we will deduct five points from our total score. And, of course... AJ Minotti's favorite rule here. Whoever is currently in the lead has to go first to make it a little more like it. competitive. It's fair. All right. Oh, uh, let me see. Let me get my handy dandy. Where the hell did I put it? Okay. I was going to say, let me get my handy dandy die to see who goes first. Uh, Mike, you're going first. All right, then. I like it. All right. So tell me what you think. Tekken 3 on the PlayStation 1, April 30th, 1999 release. It's got 15 critic reviews. What does it have on Metacritic.com? That's interesting, because I don't I don't know. I would hope high. It definitely seems... It's definitely regarded as the best of the tech games on the PlayStation. Probably the best of the 3D fighting games for the PlayStation. Probably just the best fighting game on the PlayStation. How many of these reviews were then? How many contemporary? They should all be pretty high. I can't imagine what the complaint for Tekken 3 would have even been. But, like, how high does it go? Because I know when I'm, like, looking up, oh, the highest rated games of all time, I don't, I don't see it on there necessarily. So right. it's not like it's in, like, 95, even though people did that. I wouldn't think it was insane. I guess I'll play a little safe and say 91. So maybe it isn't that safe. Maybe that's not. I don't know. Interesting. Interesting. Ah, God, I hate that you say that because my gut, my gut was telling me from the get-go. 92. All right. So what are we going to see? I'm kind of Price is writing you a little bit. Yeah, but no, I think it's it's around there. This is a very, very well-regarded, very good game. It is, yeah. People were like, yeah, at the time, they are like, this is the reason to own the PlayStation, you know? Like, this was before, like, Soul Calibur became that game. This was like, yeah, arcade experience at home and the rules. So let's see. Tekken 3 on the PS1 got 
96. Wow, I was wrong, man. Holy I mean, moly. I guess I'm not shocked you got well, that good for you. I mean, I see that it. That has to be I'm I'm trying to think. Well, be I one guess... of the best PlayStation one of the best rated PS1 games. This is one of the best rated like fighting games, if not the best it's, outside yeah. of what maybe Soul Calibur. Maybe Soul, Soul Calibur, Calibur might be above it. Yeah, because yeah. they got a lot of tens. I mean, it makes sense. Like I said, like when this game came out in 1988, what exactly would you complain about with this game, really? So yeah, I mean, is like Tekken was already kind of like class leading, and this was just better than any okay. of the previous ones. Okay. All right. Next up, Bloody Roar Four. <laughs> what the hell for the PlayStation Two. November 11th, 2003, 25 critic reviews. Uh, ah, shit, I'm in the lead. Um, okay. My gut tells me curveball, Mike. My gut tells me curveball. Um, I'm not up on my bloody Aurora games. I'm, 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 I'm swinging for the, uh, backside of the bleachers. I'm going with 50, Mike. Okay. So... (laughs) I think that's too low. I had a Bloody Roar game for the GameCube. It wasn't four. I think it was the third one. It had okay. like a subtitle like Primal Fury. I don't think Bloody Four. I don't think Bloody Roar Four is great. I bet it was probably okay. I think it's probably more like a 70. All right. You think you did all right? I get that okay, but like, I don't think this people is, care. This is going to be that point where I look back at it and I'm like, yep, this is where I fucked up. Maybe, all maybe. Right. I don't really know. Like, hey, maybe there was one that was that terrible. I don't know. I didn't know there was a fourth one. I thought there was three, so. Yeah, I have no idea, so. All right. Bloody Roar 4 for the PS2 is in at 59. Oh, wow. Broke Bop's calculator yeah. again. Uh, I was n- I was nine off. I was nine off. Man, oh, that's bad for me. Not, not terrible, actually. Not like I can't come back. But yeah, okay, good job, good job. Yeah, we're we're actually decently. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, it kind of split the difference there. We're, yeah. we're still relatively close. Uh, Mike has a little bit for you, but okay, but you yeah, won. Yeah. You did better than I did. Okay, interesting. All right, all right. Uh, game number three, Arcana Heart, released on the PS2, April 10th, 2008, 12 correct reviews. Mike, have you ever heard of Arcana Heart? Is this an anime fighter? I feel like I've maybe an heard of fighter. it. Yeah, I bet with a name like Ar- yes. Arcana. Uh, Kawaii as fuck. Yes. He's crazy as fuck. This game is crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a crazy anime fighter. I don't know what people would have thought of it back in the day is the problem. I think. People regard the gameplay in these games, at least those who enjoy it. Um, this is going to be the one where I actually say 70. I, I think it did good, not great. And I don't know. I, I think it's somewhere in the 70s. I just don't know where. So I'm yeah, going to I'm just going to have to kind of, you know, uh, f- follow you here on this one. You seem to know more about me and be a slightly more optimistic. I'll say it's 72. 72 very very optimistic there yeah. i don't know this one could surprise me this thing that's what worries me i'm, I'm kind of curious here all right arcana heart the first to my knowledge uh got 77 hey. all right hey. which means hey. that we are closer than ever i'm still slightly in the lead mike has 21 and i have 20 the fourth game is Aquapaza Aqua Plus Dream Match for the PlayStation 3. God damn it, Bob. Uh, released November 19th, 2013. 13 critic reviews. Man, I hate picking round numbers, but I'm just like, I. Th- what is this? I know the range. But even is this? I am not super familiar with Aquapaza. It sounds like a I've match three it. game. <laughs> this is another anime fighter. Mm. Um, I know so little about this game. I'm going to say there's no way it did worse, right? I don't think. I'm always metagaming here. I'm like, would Bob do that to us? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say a nice, clean 75, Mike. I'm going to say an even nicer and cleaner 65. <laughs> That's nicer, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you might be right. I have no idea. This is the thing, because, like, this is... I mean, granted, 2013, we are in the weeb era with this. So yes. I think like people might have liked it a little bit more, but I don't know how much people... I, I, it has a scene? I know that much? Okay. We'll, we'll I see. didn't know it has a scene, so that might be bad for me. Let's, we'll see. Mm, exactly. That's my insider me. knowledge there. That, that's Aquapaza. every fighting game. That's every <laughs> fighting wrong. game, yeah. He's not wrong. Every, everyone plays something. There's a song Aquapaza. Scene, so. yeah. Aqua Plus Dream Match has... 
75. Oh, fuck me. Let's go. Good. I'm going in a hole. Oh shit. Wow. Right. Going bad. into the final game. Oh, Mike no. has 31 and I have 15. Game number five is Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Oh no. Xbox 360 version here, March 6, 2012, 45 critic reviews. Okay, now here's the point in the game where I start doing math, Mike. <laughs> it's going to be pretty um, hard for me to make up 16 points on this one, because I think you're going to, you you know the window of possibility. I know the here. window. I know the window. All right. So I might just have to try to win this one as a point of pride instead of winning the whole game at this point. I don't know. I'm playing it safe. And I'm going to go. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm once again doing math. I think 75 is the play here because then plus or minus 15. I think I'm safe if I say 75. Yeah. Like, I know I need to go higher to, like, hope to win, but it, I don't think it's, there's any way it's an 85 or higher. It might be in the low 80s. Like I honestly, I think it's probably like an eighty-two, but that's not gonna like. Uh, you could you could try to go for exact score here. And yeah, maybe, I don't know if that'll maybe even be enough, you. but um, probably not. Maybe I'll be slightly more optimistic than nah. It's, I think it, I think it's eighty-two. Actually, I want to guess eighty-two. Eighty-two. All right. Let's see if you can get right on. Let's see. All right. Street Fighter Cross Tekken received. 83. No, I, even, I almost went to, one Wait, off. if I had done eighty-three, like I almost did, that would have been. Let's see. So I Minus gain five. eight. I uh, no, still definitely still not enough. You Close you would have been uh, Close though. We are closer. Yes. Nine. All right. We are separated by nine. I yeah. win twenty three to thirty two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice <laughs> gift at the end there. Of course. Uh, thank you very much to Benji Bob for putting this together for us. Fantastic. Thank you, Bob. Good stuff. All right, everybody. We'll take one more quick break here. Get set up to uh, rank uh, or pick the best guest fighters ever we got a very fighting game central episode today i like it let's do it all right all right cool, cool, cool. let me let me just switch windows i think is what i need to do oh no that closed it didn't it uh if i just pull it back up though it should immediately it should, go yeah. to what you it need should, to do it should immediately go yes also, I probably got the math wrong on that but i don't give a shit so <laughs> you are yeah no you just you had to wait for even more. 83, that's too high for that game. That game is so bad. I don't know how yeah, much. But it had Mega Man high... in it. Oh, it exactly. had It should have been Man. less than that then. Let me see. And then I got it has that fun Mega Man everybody hates, so. Mm -hmm. All right, that's uh, what, let, me uh, let me show you what it's going to look like, Sean. I think it's good enough. I can see it on the stream because it's already there. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Oh, there it is. Yeah. There it is. Here, that's let beautiful. me. Uh, Sorry, I had it pulled up on my phone there so I could see. Oh, Fine. yeah, that looks perfect. That looks perfect. There you go. Perfect. Sounds good. Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm good to go whenever you are. Yeah, let's do it. Let's bring it back. Let's go. All right, we're back. We're going to talk about the best fighting game guest characters ever. Not a not an entirely new phenomenon, but one that seems very prominent these days and Kind of key this to girl. success. Let's go right here. Oh my Tifa God. for Tekken. Let's fucking go. I, honestly, I, even I, I want that so <clears throat> so badly. They have to. Yeah. They absolutely have to. She's perfect. Like like yeah. play play Tifa in remake. She she she, she, she is a Tekken character. character. She's, She's a Tekken character. character already. Yeah. Just yeah. I will you will you rather have Tifa or some Yakuza guy on Tekken? What do you want more? Some what guy? It, like get the hell out of here. No. Kiryu or Kiryu. I mean, they should She's do like, both. Yeah, Tifa. They should just do both, but um, no. Get Tifa, Tifa more than anything. It just is such a good fit for Tekken. But you know, um, Definitely. yeah, I know that. I know that the guest characters were a big part of Tekken Seven's success. So they were. They were. Yeah. I, I don't know. Do you want? I, I know. I see that you've list some ideas here. Do you yeah. Wanna... Okay. So here, here's how I thought we could do this, Mike. Um, I have compiled a list of. It started with every fighting game guest character ever, and I whittled it down to ones that I thought would be uh, either funny or good to talk about. Okay. So what I'm going to do here, I think, uh, is 
I'm going to rapid fire these. I'm just going to lightning around these. And you just tell me if you think it has any chance of making it into our top 10 or not. If it, if it has a chance, we'll keep it. And then we can talk about it afterwards. But otherwise, if it has zero like chance it. whatsoever, we're just going to nuke it right away. Sound good? Sounds good. Cool. Okay. Going down the line here from Fighters History, Karnov. Uh, Jeff Grubb's not here. We don't have to <laughs> give respect to Karnov. All right, cool. I included just for him. All right. Uh, Pepsi Man and Fighting Vipers. Yes. Okay. Um, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, I forgot to mention, I imposed these restrictions for this list, but not for the uh, the patrons. So the patrons can get a little crazier. I imposed the rule of um, no characters that are from the rights holder of the game. So like no Nintendo characters in Smash. And I strayed away from even like Heihachi and Soul Calibur or Mega right. Man and Street or like, no, for like, a second. What about like... like um, uh cloud in um air guys like nothing like that yeah i have no cloud in air that guys that's a good to example too yeah I, like if, if the community brings them up what well, we might talk about or if one of us feels strongly enough we'll talk about it. but generally speaking i strayed away from those because you okay. know it's often a little lame anyways so yeah so that's because i see you have earthworm jim and battle arena toshi did which which no it's <laughs> funny that that happened the Clay Fighter one, I think, might fall under that rule, because that was just those people. They owned Earthworm Jim. Yeah, I right? actually don't remember if it was or not. But yeah, I have Earthworm Jim here in both <laughs> Ballerina, Toshinden, and Clay Fighter, which I got to be honest, Mike, I don't think we're going to talk about them in either context. No, they're out of here. Okay. Uh, Tekken 3 with Gone. I know people love Gone, but it's not because, like, oh, my God, Gone is in Tekken 3. I think right? they think of him as a Tekken character. Yeah, so, I mean, like, I do. Yeah. They sh- yeah, he should just be a Tekken character. So probably not for this list. Okay. Uh, here's where things start to get interesting, because we have maybe the most iconic one, Link and Soul Calibur 2. Absolutely. Okay. Like, this is what we're first time me thinking about, like, guest characters like that. That blew my mind. That was so cool. Spawn and Soul Calibur 2. No, fuck Spawn. <laughs> He's a, he's a guest character I'll, in like a million fighting games at this point. It's boring. I'll say not in Soul Calibur 2, at least. No. no. Um, right. Mega Man EXE and Anamusha Blade Warriors. That is a Capcom character, but I thought it was interesting. <laughs> Look, it's cool that it happened. But... <laughs> it's cool that it happened, but no. no. And then Mega Man Zero's Zero was also in that game, which That's I thought was interesting. Very interesting, but no. Yeah. Uh, Fred Durst in Fight Club the Game. Let, let's, let's, uh, let's leave that one up there for now. Okay. Uh, Nicole four five eight in Dead or Alive four. This is the female Spartan that they put in for uh, you know Xbox. The female Spartan. Oh yeah, that's yeah. it's kind of neat. Um, I like how it's Dead or Alive. Dead or Alive can't be Master Chief. It's got to be a sexy woman nope. still. Uh, it, it's got to be someone who's got boobs underneath. <laughs> yeah, let's say no. No. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm not super thrilled about it either. But here, once again, Soul Calibur bringing the heat. Darth Vader in Soul Calibur four. Yeah, and you know, so that same one has Yoda and the Apprentice. Darth Vader was the one here that I thought was actually like pretty sick. That was really cool. I I, think at least for the initial round, we keep both Vader and Yoda, but get rid of the Apprentice. I guess Uh, we could talk about it more, but yes. uh, Yeah, we can talk about it more later. All right, we start getting into Smash's guest characters, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, we definitely has to be talked about. And Solid Snake. Oh, that was actually announced even before Sonic. So actually, Smash Brothers' first guest character in some ways. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, Kratos and Soul Calibur Broken Destiny, or if you prefer, Kratos and MK9. The Broken Destiny was first. Yeah. Um, but people know him from MK9, I think. Yeah, Kratos the, is almost like so well suited to fighting games that he's almost not that interesting as a, a guest <laughs> character to me. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. it, it could be talked about, but we could also just get rid of it. Honestly, it's not going to make the list. Uh, I'll split the difference and just get rid of the Soul Calibur okay. one, please. Um, Freddy Krueger and MK9. That was that made a ton of sense. That's probably worth talking about. I think that's okay. like the Mortal Kombat guest character that was really interesting. Uh, so various versions of Dead or Alive 5 had different de- guest characters. Uh, three here from Virtua Fighter. Akira Yuki, Sarah Bryant, and Jackie Bryant. I mean, it's neat. I, I like that specifically having them from Virtua Fighter. I hope we get Virtua Fighter characters in Tekken, honestly. Sure. Uh, I don't know if it's like the greatest ever. I don't think it needs to be talked about. Okay. Uh, how about my Shiranui from King of Fighters in Dead or Alive? That's cool, because that's a 2D fighting game character just being brought into a 3D fighting game series. Right. That's neat. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> let's be real, <laughs> my in Dead or Alive made all the sense in the world. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Street Fighter Cross Tekken, Cole McGrath from Infamous. No, man, that's just, man, that is so random. I Really? That mm-hmm. happened? Why? In the, in yeah. the PS3 version, yeah. That's not a Street Fighter or a Tekken. 
Nope. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's why it's a guest character, but why? Uh, yeah, yeah, they all they also had some PlayStation mascots. You know, the little cats yeah. from Japan were in there too. But they yeah, tried to make Cole. Cole a thing, and I'm like, nah, he's not a thing. He's not a, he's thing. Not a thing. No. Um. All right. A variety of PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale, which maybe is a little cheating because it's a lot of there's a lot of third characters. party stuff in there. Just inherently, the most, the most interesting ones would be the Big Daddy from Bioshock. Yeah. Uh. I mean, that was cool. I think we like so we have that we have Dante, Hayachi, Raiden, and, and Isaac. I don't really think we we probably consider any of these because, like you said, the whole game is all kind of has a ton of these sort of characters. Yeah, anyway. none of these stand out. This is one of those where it's like I also didn't include anything from like a Brawlhalla because Brawlhalla is like all guest characters at this point. So it's like eh, it's all, it almost feels like putting Nintendo characters in Smash. It's a little eh. It doesn't do anything for no, me. It doesn't do anything for you either, I take it. No, it doesn't do much for me. I mean, I, I liked having them in there. It just, it's not it necessarily neat, that special for that game to have those characters. Like, yeah. of course it does. Uh, Soul Calibur also bringing the heat a little bit here with Ezio. It made a lot of Soul sense. Soul Calibur 5. Yeah, and I don't, I don't know if it was like the craziest addition. I don't think it's as exciting as some of these other Soul Calibur ones, so I, I don't think we really need to talk Yeah, he about probably that. just doesn't hang with the other ones. He if just it doesn't was... hang with Darth Vader and Link, yeah, no. definitely. Uh, okay, a variety of Smash 4 characters here. We have pa- uh, Mega Man, Pac-Man, Ryu, Bayonetta, and Cloud. Well, and you know, I think I think Pac-Man might not make it, but the others do. Uh, I mean, get, Ryu is just... Even Ryu, yeah. Ryu, Ryu I don't see a whole lot of. Bayonetta's kind of Nintendo, so that one's to me... It's a very cool what? character for Smash Brothers, but... You know what? Yeah, she at this point she wasn't. By this, we don't think we think of her as a Nintendo character at yeah. this point. So yeah, I'll, I'll take her off too. Uh, but I think Mega Man Cloud both deserve Mega to Man. be talked about. Hey, not, I don't think I was ever more excited about a guest character announcement than Mega Man. I mean, right. obviously for me. Um, Mortal Kombat X had the quadrilogy of uh, horror icons in Jason Voorhees, Predator, Leatherface, and the Xenomorph. And these are all pretty good, huh? These are all pretty good. Those I would are, say Leatherface is probably the most boring one of the group. Yeah, and I I, I don't know if Texas Chainsaw Massacre is quite as iconic as these other franchises to me. Uh, even though, yeah. like, like, that's one I actually did see as a teenager was Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It traumatized me, uh, <laughs> but I saw it. So I don't know if I'd really need to consider Leatherface, but those other three, that's that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to it, but you can literally have Alien vs. Predator and MKX. That's, that's pretty dope. Uh, I did include one from Rivals of Aether because I thought it was interesting enough. Ori from Ori in the Blind Forest. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool that they had Ori uh, in that game. They're making a sequel. I don't know if Ori's going to make it back. I, I like it if he, mm, maybe. If he could. Uh, I think it's neat. I don't know if it's going to hang. Uh, All but... right, we'll, we'll we'll keep it for now. Okay. Um, Injustice 2 had two interesting ones. Hellboy. Yeah. And I think even maybe even more interesting the teenage mutant ninja turtles as one character <laughs> yeah that was pretty cool you can yeah. change like the the turtle by changing their um like their outfit something mm. like that no 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 no. that's the that's the neat thing it's not even palette swaps you you pick a turtle yeah, yeah. but then the other turtles are like moves they come in and out of the of the yeah of the game like it's pretty oh, oh right right i was complaining yeah. it with the um, thing of marvel combat 11 where you can change like the stuff you right, change, right, right, right i think these place. were both yeah. fantastic uh kind of choices here you know they are they are superheroes right but like they're ones that kind of fit into the injustice verse with right which yeah. is a little bit darker especially you do that kind of darker tmnt thing i think they both yeah. stay all right cool uh tekken 7 a few interesting ones here uh akuma who is in the base oh, roster sure. Uh, Geese Howard from SNK Games, uh, you know, King of Fires, uh, Fatal Fury, and whatnot. Yes. Noctis Lucis Kylum, my main from Final Fantasy 15, a wild pick and? there. And uh, Negan from The Walking <laughs> Dead. Yeah, everyone but Negan. <laughs> God. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's, I there's a lot of, yeah, there's a wow factor to Negan, but yeah, it's I, not. I get it. Cool. It was, you know, that series, but. That's also that's like a guest character that seems to have aged badly to me. Like, really yeah, who cares? Yeah. I don't know. Um, a few from in their character. Man, yeah, Soul Calibur Six bringing in again. Uh, first of all, uh, is it Geralt or Geralt? I'm not a Witcher guy. Uh, Geralt, Geralt of Rivia. It's Geralt. 
All right, G- Geralt, uh, who, who is in the base roster. Uh, 2B, which I think is a very interesting choice from uh, Nier, was a DLC character. And also Haomaru from uh, Samurai Showdown made it in. I forgot Haomaru was in there. All of these are pretty good. I think 2B is definitely the best of yeah. those. I um, would almost say we just get rid of Jerry right away. I don't away. think Jerry, I mean, yeah, yeah. He, he almost, fit in, he almost fit in too well with Soul Calibur. It was just yeah, because like, there's like portal stuff going yeah. on. That's kind of his thing. Like, oh, yeah, I think, of course he's here. I think 2B is the one who sticks around out of all of these. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, 2B also, by the way, coming to Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, which makes so much sense. Yes. Then we have a crap ton of Smash Ultimate characters. So we got Simon Belmont, Richter Belmont, Ken Masters, Joker from Persona, Hero from Dragon Quest, Banjo and Kazooie, Terry Bogard, Steve from freaking Minecraft, Sephiroth, Kazuya Mishima, and the boy himself, Sora from Kingdom Hearts. For me, the three that hit pretty hard were Simon Belmont, Banjo Kazooie, and Sora. I don't know if there's any other ones that you want to include. I mean, there's definitely some good ones here, but like. Okay, it, so we say out of the Belmonts, you would pick Simon? Yeah, or, I mean, Rick, there's a nice bonus. He's even kind of presented as much, but having yeah. Simon, especially in the Nintendo fighting game series, that, that mattered more to me. Okay, process of elimination. Yeah, Ken Masters, nah. It, Ryu's not hanging. Ken's not hanging. Yeah. Um,. Hero, we we don't care about Hero, I right? like I like Hero. I like how it's all a bunch of different versions of Hero, and he actually plays really well. Like It could hang. We could consider Hero. That would probably be my next one. I would say I just don't care about Hero at all. If so you don't if care about it at all, it's not going to happen. We can just get rid of him yeah. now. It's cool. I like it. Um, Terry, I, I love that they put Terry in because uh, sure. it's a deeper cut, but it's also like he's not the most exciting one in the world, kind of like Ken and Ryu, so probably right. not. Um. And everyone, well, Kazuya, nah, because Kazuya is also like we, a Bandai Namco character. It's almost like, you know, Pac-Man. Yeah. Well, we've, we've had Namco so many Smash, so. Tekken characters show up as guest characters in our games at this point that it's kind of lost a little impact. It's still neat, yeah. but. But Joker and Steve both need to be there at least for talking points. Like, of, come on. Okay, in terms of how wild it was, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, like, we'll, we'll see what happens when we get to our personal choices, but Steve literally broke Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know if I need Sephiroth, though. Like, I like Sephiroth and Smash, but I remember at the time, like, oh, I don't know if I needed another Final Fantasy VII character in here yeah. specifically. It's I, I good. like Sephiroth. I play him a lot, but, like, I think Cloud is the more interesting addition because at the time, it was like, holy shit, they put a Final Fantasy character in. So, yeah. All right. So, yeah, we'll do Simon, Joker, Banjo, Steve, and Sora are in the running, at least. Uh, Mortal Kombat, bringing the heat again. We got Spawn popping up again uh the joker as in the dc villain uh terminator t800 arnie himself uh robocop and then i doubled down here uh john rambo as well yeah i mean uh spawn we all know how i feel about him the, this version of the joker did very little for me i didn't like his look in this um yeah. doing the whole kind of 80s uh action star thing like that really speaks to me i i like uh all those. I, the, it sucks that the Terminator we have in this is kind of the one from that newer movie at the time, but it was still the Terminator. Uh, yeah, still I, Arnold's face at least, not right. his voice, but his face at least. Uh, Rambo looks great. I I love the way RoboCop looks in this game. Actually, yeah. I love his intros and everything. The fact that they you know they got um uh, Peter Peter, Peter uh, I can't remember his name now, but yeah, they got the guy to come in and do it. I'm RoboCop. Yeah. What are we talking about? So those three I think are pretty cool. I think. Yeah, Spawn doesn't even play that well in here, so I think we get rid of Spawn. Yeah. Got kind of a cool throwback for the people who like him from back in the 90s and whatever, sure. Peter I Lowell, would even you. say John Rambo doesn't make it, because, like, yeah. he's. I don't think he's quite as exciting as Terminator or RoboCop, you know? I'd like Rambo, so maybe that's a little bit for me, but yeah, I mean, it, it, there's tough competition here. It's, it's not Terminator and RoboCop. Like, that's more exciting to see go f- fight each other. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll take him off then. Um, <laughs> I wanted to add these just for representation. Power Rangers Battle for the Grid got Ryu oh, yeah. and Chun-Li as the Crimson Hawk Ranger and the Blue oh. Phoenix Ranger, respectively. Yes, the, the, they, they transformed them into Power Rangers and they look so fucking cool. That's like to nice. the point that they should put this, yeah, they should put this outfits on Street Fighter VI, like, because they look so awesome. Especially Chun-Li. Chun-Li looks cool as fuck. Look, it's nice, but I mean, I'll, I'll leave it to you. I haven't played this game. I haven't seen these. Do you think, Sean, this is going to have a chance? 
I think they're very, very cool, but I don't think they have a chance is the problem. Yeah. yeah. They, they, the I would, really good. I think one of them might legitimately make like top 20, but we, uh, I've set up for a top 10 and I don't think they make top 10. So let's take them off for now. Um, <laughs> This is one for me. Biken from Guilty Gear was in Samurai Showdown's reboot. I mean, it's neat. I'm it's not going to get away with this one, it. am I? No, you're not going to get away with that. I'm sorry. I don't know. Okay, about no. that. I, mean, I played Guilty Gear, but uh, who? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, it, it's. I think that's not like top 20, but not top 10. And then from Mortal Kombat 1, uh, Homelander, Omni-Man, and Peacemaker. Modern, like, M-rated superheroes. Yeah, I mean, look, this... Uh, I, I complain when they announce these, and I get I get why I do them, and I get why it's a good fit for Mortal Kombat. But all of these like modern, gritty, subversive superhero TV show characters do do nothing for me personally. Yeah, same. Yeah. So I think we'll take those off for now. Um, how about before we actually get into like ranking? Why don't we see what the community has to say first, in case there's anything we missed or anything like that? Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, so uh, let's do that. Let's see what if they had any suggestions, or all let's right. see what they're thinking of as we begin to consider these. Cool. I have it pulled up here. If I did this right, it should be framed up and everything. Yes, it's already. perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Hell yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, Bench JC says Steve, uh, Minecraft Steve and Smash. They took away his meat. Remember when he <laughs> has his meat? Oh, that's meat. right. He had a boner. Yeah. Yeah, he had a and boner. And they, 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 they asked, yeah, they asked Phil what he thought about that. He was like, oh, that must be a mistake. Somebody. <laughs> Uh, casual put the Kool Aid Man. Was he in something? Because I, I hope so. That'd be amazing. Maybe Mugen, but I don't think sure. an actual <laughs> fighting game. I saw a pretty play. good Big Bird in Mugen once. I think about that all the time. I bet. Um, uh, Michael Riley says I'll link in Soul Calibur Two. That, I mean, oh, that's gonna be pretty high up there. I'll tell you it's right now. It's gonna be pretty high up. Uh, Joy Z says Bad Box Art Mega Man from Street Fighter Cross. It is Second. cool. I did like it. Now it is a little bit like just within the own, you know, its own company, but still, yeah. I, I remember. I, I remember people were mad, like because the Mega Man was like, "Oh, they're treating him like a joke." I was like, "Oh, just yeah. laugh. It's funny. Come on." Like, yeah, it is a joke, but that's the thing. Like, it's a joke. Come yeah, on, come fine. on. Like, actual Mega Man characters are in like Marvel versus Capcom and stuff. Like, yeah, come on. It's all good. But I think even even if we did like allow this, you know, uh, to counter our rules, I'm not sure he makes top ten. Probably not. No. Yeah. Uh, Doom Null Crossing has a snake in the various Smash games he's in. Uh, that Mr. was uh, a huge deal yeah. when we first got Snake, by the way. I, I did oh, freak yeah. out. I remember that. That was uh, some of the first internet videos I ever watched were the like uh, YouTube uploads. Very, very early YouTube up uploads. Maybe it even was like Smash Dojo stuff of the Sonic and Snake reveal trailers for Brawl. Like that was super hype back then. Yep. Um. Mr. Bowler says gone from uh, Tekken 3. Uh, Alex shouts out uh, Darth Vader and Yoda from Soul Calibur 4. That's right. You could eventually get both of them. Like, at first, um, Vader was a PS3 exclusive and Yoda was a 360 exclusive, which is we, funny because yeah, they match those systems with black, colors. Associated with black, green. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got yeah. it. Yeah. And then they both had uh, Starkiller. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> Eden, Reyna's little pog champ, says Kratos. And I'm going to assume she means Mortal Kombat. Or maybe just a character in general. Uh, low rule says uh, <laughs> Tifa in Tekken 8. A fan render here we have, which... It's gotta happen. Not, not eligible tonight, but you know what? May, may someday she'll be on the list. It's gotta happen. Uh, GameCube Chris says Robocop in MK11. Oh, yeah. uh, Jamie H. Christmas Eve says uh, Snake in Smash. Beef Hammer says Hornet, the uh, <laughs> Daytona car from let's see, yeah. this would have been Fighters Mega Mix, right? Oh, I God, I love Fighters Mega Mix. I mean, Fighters <laughs> Mega Mix is nothing but silly characters. All it's like all the Virtue Fighter and Fighting Viper characters, then just a bunch of bullshit. Now it's all also Sega stuff, right? Like it Daytona. is all Sega. So it's Even a little still though, like this, this is the best of like that random bullshit. All right, <laughs> right, I tell you what, Mike. I tell you what, if you wanted to, I would be on board for putting Hornet on the list. Yeah, I think Hornet actually needs to be considered. I think that's the okay, one that can we'll, break we'll the rule. Okay, we'll talk about Hornet. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. It, it was incredible. Uh, you could, you also got the fight as like uh, AM2's logo in that game, like that palm tree. <laughs> yes. Oh, God, that game God, That game is wild. I love it. I played I so, so much. much Fighters Mega Mix. It was the best. Uh, Nick Turbo says Negan, which, no. No, nope. uh, I do like watching him play Tekken Bowling, sure. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what's going on here, but Villain Mac makes a joke about Sifu. Well, Sifu so, is a uh, fighting game. <laughs> it's a fighting game of, yeah, I whatever year that was. Like, yeah, I get yeah, it. 2021 sure. or whatever, yeah. So, dude from Sifu. There you go. 
Um, Adam says Snake in Smash. That's great. Diogo says Banjo and Kazooie in Smash. That was that was of all the Smash Ultimate reveal trailers. That was the one that actually got me the most, even more so than Sora's. I don't know why. I was like. I was like, this feels right that Banjo's back in like this Nintendo mashup thing. It was cool. Yeah. No love that, for that Joker, cool. huh? A little I say Joker. Love, a little love. I say Joker. I'm I might argue for Joker. We'll we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I, I don't want to be like I had a little bit of a that game's not even on Switch problem with But it. that's why it was cool. Because that meant cool. that anything could right, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll get to it. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. Uh Weezman says <laughs> Earthworm Jim in this would have been Clay Fighter. Clay Fighter 63 uh, and a third. Absolutely. Ass. Ka- Chaos Buckaroo. Yeah. I can't even be mad here. This is just a picture of 2B and Soul Calibur. This is just in the game, so I can't be mad. Um, let's move right along. Uh, Always Be Clothing slash Corgi says, uh, I guess this is Rambo and the Terminator yeah. in MK11. It was cool to see like Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone like facing off each other like that. Yeah. Uh, this would be Screaming Man says uh, Earthworm Jim in Ballerina Toshinden. I that believe. is still this so weird. PC like version. that makes no sense. There's no logic to that. It's so wild. Yeah, I don't know, but it's also like it's just whack. It's just yeah. whack. Uh, Wong Gifts says Power Febreze in Mugen going up against <laughs> Batman funny. here in an aquarium. Uh, Shoji Kodo says Pepsi Man Pepsi in. Man. Um, what, what did I say in Fighting Vipers? Yes. Yes. Uh, Tekken Wolf 5 says Garfield in a uh, Nickelodeon, whatever you call oh, yeah. it. He's a, Ni- he's a Nick character. He's in the, yeah, he's so in the Nickelodeon he's Smash. Not a, not a guest character. Yeah, well, Nickelodeon um, had a licensed Garfield show, right? Yeah. Uh, I think they just own Garfield now, like the same way they own uh, oh, really? uh, Turtles. I think so. I think so. Yeah. Um, Tears of the Pal Boomer says Waluigi, which... No, no and I sadly hope not. Never. It'll be messed up if he's not no. in the next Smash Brothers. Like, okay, no, come it would on. It'll be right. No, if he's no. Not, yeah. Uh, no, fuck be, this guy. Yeah. Fuck all I, I think I forgot that you two are such rampant Waluigi haters. Jeez. He's he's weird. He's the worst. Uh, fuck that guy. He's not even funny. Is he better Mike, or worse than this guy? Yeah, help me out here. Who the hell is this? That's that Chris Davis Benoit. Says? That's the one who uh, you know, killed his family. <laughs> but, oh. Yeah. Thanks, Willow. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> Leah says Joker in Smash, which, yes, I agree with. Let's go. Hammond of Texas says The Predator in Mortal Kombat X. Uh, I don't know what Krantus McBasketball is going here with J- Johnny Cage. Maybe uh, they're referencing uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme yeah, but that yes. looks like, in that is, game. Is that the Jean-Claude Van Damme version? It is version? not. not. Well, then I so, don't know. Yeah. Uh, which also, that is canonically Jean-Claude Van Damme playing Johnny Cage in that universe. So technically, not a guest character. Oh, there you go. Uh, GB Cran says Yoda in uh, Soul Calibur 4. Uh, <laughs> Alex Agogo says Durst, Fred Durst in a wrestling game. I don't know which yeah, one I this is. I think that's a but... call. I think that's a creator wrestler just in one of the first SmackDown games. No, I think he just is in that one. People he... were talking about it. I so think he he's in that in and there. Fight Club? And Fight Club, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I say I Fight Club, though, because Fight Club. I think Club... that's a creator wrestler. I don't know, though. I don't know. Was a, someone will research it for us. <laughs> Fred Durst can't be in two fighting games. I don't want to look it up. I'll say if we if we want to talk Fred Durst, it'll be the Fight Club one because that's more of a traditional fighting sure. game. Uh, this one I found out when doing research. Uh, Clink has Barney the dinosaur. Jesus uh, Christ! Altered slightly uh, in some random PC oh fighting game. That's terrifying. I think so yeah. The, uh, the first uh, like when we had AOL as a kid. And people made flash games. The first flash games ever were all Super killed. Smash Flash. No, and no, way before no? this, Sean. It was just click on Barney, pictures of Barney, and you shoot. Oh, you're him talking like dies. that stuff. That's I'm talking yeah, yeah, yeah. AOL in like 1994, Sean. Like, okay, yeah. okay, okay. It was that all just shoot Barney and watch him because, like, you know, you're like 10 now and like having the slightest bit of edgy feelings about uh this this, this cartoon or weird. <laughs> friendly dinosaurs and now you got to shoot them in the head so yeah, you're, you're the a man effect, like it. my grandpa uh mid- Ooh, my by, by the way grandpa anymore. by the way uh mikey o'leary who we know we can trust in chat says uh fred durst is featured as a playable character in the wwe smackdown the just hell? bring it roster as part of the extra roster oh my <laughs> god that's insane fred durst is with too Perfect. many fighting games that's too too, too many, many fighting, fighting games, games for fred durst <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Mitsurugi says Freddy Krueger in MK9. 
Uh, this is this one I cut. Ezipsis says in the Wii TMNT fighting game or whatever, it's made by Ubisoft, so the Rabbids are in it. But look, it wouldn't count anyways. It technically won't count anyways, so yeah, we're just gonna- I've been seeing some Rabbids reevaluation that I don't like, where people are like, I like the Rabbids, actually. No. No, no. we don't. No, get out of here with Stop. that shit. No, no. no, we don't. Come on. Uh, Isaac Clark seconds Hornet from uh, oh, Fighters yeah. Mega Mix. Uh, Lenny Cool Dick Denver, uh, Narsha for Gone. And what is Gone three. actually from? It's just like a manga character. It's eh. like a manga and anime character that they licensed because uh, Bandai does some of the licensing. So they just, you know, it, it can't be that, that relationship. Couldn't it be that difficult for them to just license him again to put him in Tekken 8 if they want to, right? Uh, Harada says no. Like, apparently it was just a one time thing and they've never been able to do it again. So, Weird. yeah, apparently it's just a no. Uh, Tree Fitty Kong says, uh, Robocop in MK11. Input name here, Jerry of the River from Soul Calibur 6. (laughs) Uh, you know, I'm going to not do much of that one because there's a flash warning on that one. JD Camp says, uh, was this Hori Maru is his name? Some like Japanese comedian was in, uh, like X-Men versus Street Fighter. Oh, really? One of those things? Is it like that weird version of Super Mario Brothers with those radio hosts? Yeah, it's, it's one of those types of things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Laser Wolf says Noctis in Tekken 7. Uh, Big Tony says Sephiroth in Smash, and a bunch of people are reacting to that. Stupid, uh, sexy Matt... Sephiroth. <laughs> Matt Rare Monkey says uh, Toro and Kuro in the PlayStation version of Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Again, oh. those are the PlayStation uh, mascots in Japan at that time. Right. I, just, I know them because they were in PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale. <laughs> If this was not a eater. This is a creative character. This Actually, is Colonel it might Sanders not be because they had a they had a deal with KFC around this time. It might be real. <sighs> that might be real. They did have a no, KFC the, thing going on. The, the Colonel Sanders dating game that was real. I'm pretty sure this they had, one isn't. Colonel Sanders had a match in WB. It was like a commercial, mm, but they did do like that. This. It might be real. Yeah, like yeah. Zach says it's real. That's real. Colonel Sanders was in the WB okay. game. Okay, I'm still saying no. But <laughs> I mean, I don't like it, but it's real. Now this, this I know is a creator character. Yeah. <laughs> DMC, Depress Me Crying, says Reggie fils Yeah. Uh, Higantes says Banjo-Kazooie in Smash. Uh, Nick says Tripping in Brawl. Thank God I was only a guest. It's Dr. Booger Ryan Man. says Booger Man in one of the Clay Fighter games. Clay Fighter 63 and a third. Is it just always Clay for 63 and a third? That's what I want with guest characters anyways. And then Taniel, last one up here, says, I believe the, this character's name, is it Blitz Kampf? Is the Blitz tank's Blitz Tank. Name? Blitz Tank. It is just Blitz Tank, okay? I thought they went yeah. with the actual, like, Nazi reference or something like that, but... No, yes. no, no. From the Akatsuki and Ains. Yeah, but anyways, this was a character in uh, Blaze Blue Cross ba- yeah. Tank okay. Battle. So, yeah, Blitz Tank. That's fine. Uh, wild shit. You straight up a tank, yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. Pretty funny. All right. Anyways, I think Horn is the only one that we were pulling for that. I think a lot of those were the ones we said. uh, Yeah, I think we're going to pull Hornet from there for sure. That is just too good. Okay. Um, So let me consolidate the list a little bit here. Yeah, I guess one thing I kind of want to do, especially with series that have multiple entries, is maybe figure out which one is our favorite from those. That's Uh, a good idea. Maybe maybe some series would have more than one. I don't know, but I'd be surprised. I'd be surprised if that was the case. Um, so as you're doing that for Soul Calibur, Link definitely hit the hardest for me. Um, I, I think that was kind of almost just shocking that Link was just in a fighting game and in this really good fighting game, they did a really cool job translating his moveset, giving him things like that downward sword thrust from Zelda, uh, two, he had like the boomerang, the bow and arrows and the bombs, you know, in a series, uh, that did not have many range attacks. You had that really cool stage with the incredible orchestrated Zelda music, something we had not heard much of in actual Zelda games yet at that point. Um, It just was really cool. And I like that, you know, like they made him look a bit more realistic so he fit in a little bit of Soul Calibur, but he also just looked like Link still, right? It was just clearly like adult Link from uh, Ocarina of Time. Ocarina, yeah, definitely. You know, like the whole gimmick with um, the multi-platform release of Soul Calibur 2 was having... Uh, different guest character for each one, and it kind of fell apart for PlayStation 2, and they were stuck with uh, just Hayachi, which wasn't all that exciting. Xbox got Spawn, right. who cares? Uh, Link, so much cooler than all of those. Uh, Definitely. If not that, then probably one of the Star Wars ones, and to me, I thought Darth Vader was was cooler than Yoda, just because, you know, I'm a I'm an old person, so I find Yoda's uh, flippy, <laughs> dippy lightsaber stuff a little... um. 
maybe not cringe, but eye rolly, I suppose. But Darth Vader, I think they did kind of translate his, like, really powerful lightsaber stance. I love that his one throw in Soul Calibur 4 is literally, like, the throw he does in Return of the Jedi when he just picks up the Emperor and throws him, you know, kind of off that bridge. When you get a oh, ring cool. out with that, that is satisfying <laughs> as hell. It's like, that I love that. Cool. Okay. Yeah. All right, so you, yeah, we here we have a condensed list, and I do think, uh, based on the way it looks, that we are going to have multiple characters from the same series. And boy, we picked a lot of Soul Calibur, Smash, and MK, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. So I think Link's a lock. I think Link's a lock too. Where do you think on this list he goes? I would, I could put him at number one for now, to be honest. Yeah, I think I think that can be debated. By it think can be debated, but that's where I put he him for can now. he can sit there for now. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I would probably also do Vader. I, I I think some people like Yoda more. I like Vader more than Yoda. Yoda was all Yoda sucked. Yoda was like <laughs> he was annoying. You played, if, yeah, you played Yoda. You were annoying. It so, was yeah, annoying you know as what? all hell. It was like uh, being odd job. Just like gone. Golden Eye, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah like oh, yeah. Yeah, Um, you want to put Darth Vader like the bomb list for now and see if he gets squeezed out, or I think out of all the other Soul Calibur ones, yeah, it would be Vader. Yeah. I, as cool as I think Two B was, yeah, I think Two B's um, gonna be an even better fit in Grand Blue than in Soul Calibur. Yeah, and uh, special Nick, our buddy in the chat, says uh, one that I I left off for our for my reasoning at least for making this list. But if there's room, I might try to squeeze this one on. Uh, some of the Killer Instinct characters, there was oh. Rash, General Rom, and Arbiter. And out of all those, I would put Rash on the list. Rash. And looking, I think we should looking consider at Rash. This now, yeah, looking at this now, seeing how much like Smash and Mortal Kombat and stuff there is, I'm like, if we want to diversify a, a little bit, Rash is a I think really Rash should be cool. considered. I thought that was that was definitely the one of those I thought was most interesting. I know it was Rash a bit of a the, meta character for a while, too. Yeah. Um, it was like a deeper pool than just like doing some halo character uh yeah. something from gears of war right i thought because was... like killer instinct isn't it isn't a smash brothers thing no but like it it is a microsoft owned character which is why i was like eh. but yeah, yeah I'll, but we can put him at the 11 case. spot for now rush from the battle toast for the people who don't know to rash yes is. yes <laughs> if you didn't know rash pimple and zits off the top of your head i feel yes. bad for you <laughs> Rash is also my main, so uh, don't worry. I definitely know Rash is in that game. Um, I'm sort of just going down the list here, and I think I don't know. Like, we we gotta start like knocking off some of these Smash characters. I think. Who is your favorite of all the Smash, or like the one you think was the best Out of, guest character? Hmm, those are two different questions. Yeah, uh, I, I guess here, here's where I'm kind of thinking. Like, to me, Solid Snake maybe as a shot just because that was the first one, and it was so surprising. Uh, and then like in a, yeah. in a personal way, of course, I love Mega Man in there. I thought that was, you know, really cool, but that's kind of a personal thing. Mm-hmm. And then I thought ba- Banjo-Kazooie and Sora were the like most hype ones, if that makes sense. I think Joker is both my personal one and also like Joker was the one that sort of broke everyone because like I mentioned earlier, he didn't have his mainline game on Switch at the time. No. So that just told us anything goes. Like, and that's what was like super hype is because everyone saw, you know, they were doing a, a trailer for like a persona, something at a uh, Nintendo director was is game awards. Yeah. Game we awards. saw persona something and we're like, Oh cool. You know, it's going to be a port to the switch or something like that. And then Joker turns the envelope around. It's the smash invite. I was like, Holy freaking shit. It was surprising. Shit. Yeah. Like it, it uh, Wolf mentions in the chat that like Cloud was basically that uh, for Smash Four as well, but I don't know. Like Cloud, <sighs> I think Cloud was less surprising than Joker in some ways. Uh, yeah, I just think he's like, less surprising because Final Fantasy does have a association with just like, Nintendo, yeah. and just yeah, Persona just doesn't outside of like Persona Q at that point on uh, yeah. 3DS. So I, I, I okay, let's put it this way: I don't think Simon's making it. No, Simon's not going to make it. I don't think yeah. Steve's going to make it. Uh, it's cute, but I just kind of look. I'm just gonna say it. I just don't like it enough. I'm sorry. I no. Ugh. I mean, I don't like it either. And I think, yeah, this is a personal list, so yeah. Yeah, I, just not. No, we're way. knocking Steve off. 
No, just you know, shout outs to like how he broke the internet for sure. Yeah, and for his meat. I. Shout out to his meat. <laughs> it's funny because Sonic the Hedgehog. Like, I know that was a big deal. I hate the way Sonic plays in Smash Brothers. I think he's boring as shit in Smash. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll give you a. I'll give you a different perspective on that. I will say I think Sonic wasn't actually that exciting even back then because of how buddy buddy Sega and Nintendo were starting to get. It wasn't very surprising. It was still like. You know, like, of course, I was going to be one of the first guest characters, but it's yeah. like that modern Sonic. And, you know, and again, I don't like the way he looks. I think we can yeah. not worry about Sonic. Yeah, like he he sort of set the stage for more characters in a way that I think Solid Snake maybe didn't. And like, I, I know it's weird because like Solid Snake was the trendsetter. But like, yeah, I don't right. Know, no, Solid Snake seemed because, again, that that came way more out of left field and was I don't know way more exciting to yeah. me. In a way better stage um, in that game, too. The Metal Gear stage uh, than the stupid yeah, Sonic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Shadow Moses, yeah. Uh, I don't think Ori makes it. Ori's not going to make it. Nah. Cool. Uh, Very cool. What about these Injustice characters? Hellboy and TMNT. Hellboy's cool. It seems like TMNT was a bit more involved. Yeah, uh, neither one of them makes it for me. They're Either. both cool, but yeah, I don't have affinity for either. Okay. I don't think they broke the internet necessarily. Kratos yeah. doesn't. Kratos doesn't do it for me, but Freddy Krueger is interesting because that's that, that's like the first of this wave of just really well picked Mortal Kombat guest characters. Yeah, okay, maybe we yeah maybe we will this down. Okay, we have four horror characters in Mortal Kombat games: Freddy Krueger, Jason, Predator, Alien. Yeah, the Xenomorph. Um, like um, those are all very good to me. And again, Freddy's first. They're all very good. And I Freddy think being first. first matters a bit in this context. The thing is, he's not good. No. <laughs> or at least he's not fun. So no. that is what immediately Which makes one do you think is the most fun of those four? Alien. Well, I love Alien. We could just do that because the Xenomorph is so cool. That's yeah. it. Like, it's definitely either Alien or Jason. Like, as cool as Predator is for, like, having Alien versus Predator. Yeah, I would say the Alien is the one that I would put up here. Okay. And then, I like it. If we wanted to, we go back to Jason, but I think uh, for now, that's probably good for the horror stuff. You going to let me get Robocop in there? I will let you get Robocop over Terminator. I'll say that. Yeah. <laughs> I know some people don't necessarily love uh, Robocop's kind of keep away antics, right? Or like his, you know, gun and all that. But he looks so sick in this game. It's cool. He felt like a pretty good fit for what they were going for right, yeah i right. i think we just take terminator off right away at least um all right let's get to this tekken 7 stuff i think geese doesn't hang it's really cool and again i i love yeah. taking this traditionally 2d character and putting him in, th in a 3d fighting game but also akuma did it first akuma did it first and that i think was the <clears throat> the one that really got people Super excited about Tekken. They Seven, sold the game on Akuma. Yeah. Like Tekken was in dire straits after uh, Tekken Six underperformed. Tekken Tag Two, abysmal. People were like, Tekken is over. Then they put Akuma in Tekken. And we're like, everyone's flocking to Tekken now because we want to play. We yeah. want to check out Akuma. He's in the story and everything. This is gonna be sick. Yeah, there's, there's, um, like, there's something about Geese that's like for fighting game fans that I do like that. But sure, not yeah. this is interesting because like. Putting that character in there, like whatever, they uh, did a really good job of giving him a cool move set in Tekken Seven. Yeah, to the point that he somewhat translates to Tekken Eight with um, Victor. Uh, <laughs> Victor. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they basically made a new character for Tekken Eight to like kind of have yeah. Noctis's moves without having Noctis there anymore. Uh, and that character is sick. So it's funny how like yeah, like uh, like oh, the main character from Final Fantasy Fifteen. Who really cares? But they made him. Pretty sick, actually. I don't know. Let me see. We're starting to run out of spots. We got, we're got. we halfway. We got five more that are open. And yeah, the so more I look at, the our, more our, I think Rash might make it in. Our and locks, so that starts narrowing it. Our locks are Link, Akuma, Robocop, Xenomorph, Darth Vader. I think Rash should be in there. I think Rash should be in the list. I, I'll just say it. I think so. You know what? Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see where, where we put them. But yeah, you know what? Screw it. I'm putting you know, my boy in there. Let's go. You know who else I think should be on the list? And then hmm. I'll, I'll I'll shut up for a little bit. I think the Hornet should be there. I love that fucking car from Fire Mega Mix. This is why anybody remembers this game, aside from me, Mike. is because of the Hornet. Mike. Yep. Let's go. Hornet's absolutely going on the hell fucking yeah. list. It's just yeah. too cool. Oh yeah, it's too cool. <laughs> it's just too fucking cool. I love work. it. It's awesome. It's so dumb. I love it. 
Um, all right, let's be real. Fred Durst. No. <laughs> we gotta get rid of this dude. No, not happening. It is not about the he said, she said bullshit. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, and it's sorry, Pepsi man, but uh uh we actually had a better joke character with the uh, Yeah, you know what? Yeah, for that type of game. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I think you actually one. I think you actually moved your uh list over a little Yeah, I'm trying yeah. I'm trying to find where I had before. I think it was right there. That's good. There you go. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh what do, you, what do you think you about do, um, my and uh, Dead or Alive Five? God, there's never been a better fit. It's for a, a really character. good fit. It's a really good fit, but I'm also like, we have zero Smash characters on here, and we could just fill the rest of this out with Smash characters. So it's I, hard. No, it's hard. Yeah, because there's a lot of Smash characters on there, and um, I mean, we could just both pick one Smash character at least, and then. See how we feel. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let, let's each pick one Smash character that we think needs to be in there. You first. <laughs> Me first. Yeah. If I think, okay, out of all of, hmm. Do we both agree that Snake should be in there? Yeah. Okay. How, how about let's do that first? Let's put let's Snake in there. Let's do that first. Like, Snake just needs Snake to be needs there. needs to be in there. And then, let's like, talk I think about then the problem both. is, like, you would want Joker personally, and I would want Mega Man personally. That's our problem I now. I mean, we got two slots. We got two slots right now, so why don't we do that right now? Mm-hmm. And then, uh, kind of see how we feel. Like, is there anybody? Like, I don't feel bad that Jason Voorhees doesn't make it. I don't feel bad that 2B doesn't make it. I feel right. kind of bad my doesn't make it. Uh, <laughs> I feel... I, I feel a little bad Banjo Kazooie and Sora don't make it, but gosh, it's a lot of Smash Bros. characters already. Obviously, Smash Bros. got I'm very good at it. I'm a little surprised that you're not fighting for Sora here, actually. I think it's really neat. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it, like it was, it's also a like, licensing nightmare. Like, it's kind of impressive. But it's also like the 20th guest character in the game at that point, you know? True, true. Like, hey, it's our point. Hey, we, we did it. That's great. I'm think- Okay, so are, are you saying that Mega Man's a lock? Mega Man needs to be up here. I, yeah, I want Meg. Yeah, yeah, that's that. That's my um. That is my signature on this list is the okay. fact that Mega Man's on it. He is so well realized that I wouldn't fight that. Yeah, I, 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 I That's the that. best Mega Man has actually ever looked, especially outside of like the pixel art games. That Mega Man model is perfect. That's how Mega Man should yeah, always look it, like it really me. is he like animates how you expect he looks Flash and Mega so Man good to. i love his even more than like squishy. Mega 11 i would yes say. he looks way like, like Mega 11 doesn't look bad but th- th- i like this yeah. character model way more it, a lot of Mega Man games kind of make Mega Man like slender and i don't know like i don't i like this kind of chunkier Mega Man a lot more all right, all right all right i think that's i think that's it i think that's our 10 we just had to order these we just got order these then okay um that's interesting. Do we want to put the? Uh, okay. hmm, 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 hmm. I'm. What would be like ten? Is my question. Is it? The, I think out of all these, RoboCop takes ten. I think you're right. RoboCop's honestly the one that. Yeah, like maybe I was thinking about swapping out for something else. <laughs> I think that's fair. Do Do you still want RoboCop on the list? No, I don't. I kind of feel bad about it now. Uh, I like RoboCop. Maybe it just doesn't play well enough, and I feel bad about not having Maya or, S- or Sora on there to an extent. I think out of any of these, Maya or Sora would make the list, and it feels weird. I would say Sora. I know. I feel bad, like, oh, another Smash character, but it, it does seem a little silly to not have Sora on there, to be honest. It is a big deal. It is a big deal. I'll, I'll let you make the call. Can we make a top 15 list? Yet. No one would stop us. <laughs> I mean, we could make a top 15 list. <laughs> no one <list>. would <laughs> stop us. Okay. What if, you know, just hypothetically, hypothetically I just added speaking. some numbers down here. Right. And, and then, then like, uh, yeah, then Robocop yeah, would probably, well, I'd put Cloud Strife at the bottom of this list. If it was like Out that. Out of all of them. Out of all of them, I'd put Cloud Strife. Because, yeah, Cloud Strife's been in other fighting games, even though it was Urgeist. I don't know. It's cool, but it's not, like, the craziest thing in the world to me. Okay. So let's do that. And then... Uh, maybe Nautix think... would be 14? Like, a really cool moveset. Not exactly a super cool character. I think you're right. Yeah, I, mm, yeah Noctis at 14... 
This is going to look a little janky for a second. I'm just doing the overall order. Who would be above Noctis? I also think it would be Banjo. I would I would put... I do like Banjo. I... I'm trying to think. I mean, I put Banjo above Joker, but that I don't. Yeah, I I think Split. We wouldn't feel that way. No. I put, <laughs> I put, uh, I put Banjo above RoboCop. Okay, I would too. Do you think RoboCop makes it all I the way down Ro- to like thirteen? I think RoboCop's maybe thirteen. Actually, yeah. Okay, and then my actually maybe seems right there. Yeah, yeah. And just banjo. the surprise factor of Banjo. Like, let yeah, me it was cool. let me reorder this a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it would be like this for like the lower five. I think that looks right. Right now, yeah. you want a fifteen or you right. just want to delete those bottom five? Now, I guess is my question. <laughs> <laughs> um, fuck it, we make a top fifteen. I don't give a shit. Yes, make a top um, fifteen. Screw it. Are I think the top ten need to be reordered a little? Yeah, bit, yeah, yeah. Uh. I still like Link at number one a lot. I'll be honest. I still like Link at number one as well. Yeah. Um, what would I kind of like working bottom up for some reason that makes it easier. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I think you're right. I think you're right. So we could. Uh, um, I mean. Would you do I feel like it isn't their Smash Bros character, honestly, at uh, or, or we were thinking about 10 right now, right? Yeah, and honestly, not like even though I like put Mega Man on here before Sora. In some ways, Sora is like a, a better f- guest character than Mega Man. Absolutely, I I would agree with that. Yeah, but so maybe Mega Man could be ten. Okay, and I then, like that. Then maybe then we have Rash. Um. Yeah, yeah, that feels right. Yeah, that, I think see. that makes yeah. sense. Sora, I think ranks. If we're pulling him on list, I actually think he ranks fairly highly. Yeah. Yeah. Um I would maybe put I mean is this where you put alien? Joker now or Alien? I think maybe I think maybe uh, Alien above Joker. I would definitely that's the one I would fight for okay. is Joker being higher. I don't well I still want to put Alien quite yeah yet. Uh I don't know if I put it over Darth Vader or Solid Snake <laughs> or like, maybe it's getting kind of rough. It's getting kind of hard in here. Uh I know. Yeah, I know. And I don't want to put Hornet that yeah, either, to be honest. Well, I mean, you put Hornet over Joker. That's right. Sad. What about what about Akuma? How high is Akuma going? Akuma goes pretty high. Akuma goes pretty high. We're running out of high spots here. Um, I'm not. Yeah, I'm, I wouldn't fight for Akuma, but Akuma goes. High. Okay, let's try working the other way then. Link number one. What's number two? It's not Joker. <laughs> to be clear, two is not Joker. I think it is Snake. I think it is. Snake. I think Snake maybe is number two. I think that's a big yeah. deal. Um, All right, what's our number three? The Hornet? <laughs> I'm not gonna have Hornet at number three. Okay. Uh... I'll t- I'll tell you. Personal level, Joker would be at three. It's but a... yeah, it's if a we're lot. like splitting the if we're splitting the difference here, I think it would be like maybe even Akuma. Maybe or Akuma's like... number three. I yeah. think that's good. I like Akuma at three. Yeah, that's like iconic modern. Yeah. Then you uh, can have this character. Are you going to let me put Hornet above Joker? Oh, you know what? I think after Akuma should be Sora. I think I think that feels right. I think that feels right. Man, you're starting to warm up to Sora now that I, I got know, him right, on the right. list. I know, right? You're right. I think you want him on the list. I'm like, ah, you know what? All right. I think then Alien actually goes low at eight. There's a part of me Under that wants Darth to, Vader. There's a part of me wants to put it above Darth Vader. Just cause I, it's such a good fit for Mortal Kombat. Soul Calibur already has. Link. It is. It's just that Darth Vader kind of like sold some copies of the game. No, yeah, he did. I'm... He did. Um, all right, where where are we putting Hornet then into here? Is it going at six, uh, seven, or eight? I suppose. I'll be honest, Mike. Yeah. Okay, I like it. If we did that, I'm okay with this list. <laughs> I like it. I like it. All right, is this it? Are we locking this in? I'm trying to make sure, like, was there somebody more interesting that we deleted for 15 that we would put above Cloud Strife now? It's my perhaps concern. I don't think there's anything interesting enough that I would put them above Cloud. Yeah, I mean, Cloud is still... Because Cloud was, again, kind of the Joker effect for the Smash 4 era. Yeah, okay. All right, here, let me read it off. Let me read it off, and we'll see how we feel, okay? Yeah. 
So number 15 is Cloud Strife in Smash 4. Number 14 is Noctis in Tekken 7. Number 13 is Robocop in MK11. Uh, number 12 is My Shiro Nui in Dead or Alive 5 and 6. Uh, number 11 is Banjo-Kazooie in Smash Ultimate. Number 10, Mega Man in Smash 4. Number 9, Rash in Killer Instinct 2013. Number 8 is the Xenomorph in Mortal Kombat X. 7 is Darth Vader in Soul Calibur 4. 6 is the Hornet, the Daytona car oh, yeah. in Fighters Mega Mix. And then your top 5, uh, we have Joker in Smash Ultimate. 4th is Sora in Smash Ultimate. Three is Akuma in Tekken 7. Two is Solid Snake in Smash Brothers Brawl. And number one, still, Link in Soul Calibur 2. I know what I... I think that's good. What I know think? what I want. Wait. No, we already have Robocop. Never mind. I was like, yeah. oh, Robocop at 15 over Cloud. No, that's good. I mean, some people yeah, think maybe, I, maybe 2B instead of I, Cloud. You know what? You know what? Yeah. Hmm. I, still, I would Smash still say Cloud. But mm. I would also swap I out for 2B. I said we give 2B a little love. Well, I, I, I said we kiss a little love. ass. In the okay, <laughs> all right. You know what? Uh, let me see. Do I have... No, I have to write You have to write one. it right. again. For the perverts. <laughs> for the perverts. Oh, hey. Soul yes. Calibur 6. 2B. Just barely makes the top 15. There Are we you getting up? You think we're getting Soul Calibur 7 like, sooner rather than later now? Soul Calibur is dead. You're never getting another one. I don't believe you. Why? I'm not exaggerating. Why? What happened? Yeah, no. What happened? The Soul Calibur guy well. left because Soul Calibur 6 bombed. None of y'all bought it. Y'all say you want Soul Calibur? Yeah, I bought it. it. Bombed. Well, I got no a one code wanted. for it. Well. <laughs> <laughs> no. And okay. Soul Calibur. Talk. Harada literally said, ask me in 10 years. No. You're not ah, Soul I Calibur can wait. anytime soon. <laughs> you can, can wait. wait. All right. All right, there we go, everyone. That that's our top fifteen. I read it off to you, except we're swapping two B for the bomb spot there, where apparently two B's bomb is all we talk about. Hey, two uh, B, yeah. <laughs> that's cute. Hey, yeah. that's fantastic. Let's take a break. We're gonna come back and finish up the show. Show here with the super chats and what we've been playing, which I think will be a lot of tech in. So we'll be right back, everybody. Break. Gonna jump yeah. back in. I am. Uh, let me. Switch, uh, can you switch the two shot? Yeah. Well, let me. Well, I'm gonna post this to Twitter like a Jeff Grubb does first. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, also get the music ready. I got it right. It's queued up. Perfect. I'm gonna talk a little bit extra about um, Persona, of course, but outside of that, yeah, yeah we can just roll so on through. No. More games should be about death. Should be making more. Someone in the chat says Sonic fans are going to cancel us on Twitter for this list. There aren't bigger Sonic fans in games and media than me and Mike, so you know what? No. They can suck it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely not. Get out of here with that. Mm-hmm. I don't care. No, absolutely not. I'm going to figure out later. Uh, let's see what's into. Oh, I like the Ruby people in BB Tech, but they're like kind of. It's a good there. one. Yeah, but. But but they're like. That's. That's yeah, the, the whole, the whole game, thing right? is a crossover, so it's like, eh, yeah. are they really a guest? What did I do here? One second. Why did paint freeze? I'll open Photoshop. Eh, if I want to open Photoshop, that could be a disaster. Let's just close this. <laughs> Don't worry, I have to also pee. Uh, maybe I'll just hold it. Save it to the show. Save it to the... Pee in a bottle. Mm, let's not do that. Wow. What you I got need, You need the list? No, I I took a picture. I'm just trying to. Uh, there we go. He Try doesn't know how to do screenshots. I do know. It just wasn't working. <laughs> there we go. Paint. There we go. So it's kind of small. We'll see. I can do this. I believe in myself. I believe in the self that believes in my, in my self that believes in you. Okay. I forgot the phrase. Yes. Eric. Believe in the me who believes in you. It's in you, I yes. want to fly. In, so I believe in the you that believes in me. That's the. Who the hell do you think we are? Who the hell do you think I am? Yeah, Mike has no idea what we're talking about. Is that an yeah. anime? It's an anime. Yeah. Yeah. It's the best. Dengen Topa, Lagan. I love that fucking. They they show in the movie on the theaters now. I think they like Ooh. re-release it. Pretty sure. There we go. Like select. All right, I have. Posted it. Okay. Now let me fix the scene. 
Two we windows. move out. Sean's face here. Sean, you're hey, watching the anime? There he is. I will re- oh. Not right now, at least. Okay. All right. Okay, I think we're ready to get back into it. Right. Uh, let's go. Then. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I got the outro pulled up. So yeah, whenever you're ready. All right, we're back, Sean. I've been playing pretty much as much Tekken Eight as I can, which isn't always as much as I want to, but I am always having a good time when I am playing that game. That's just a good ass game, man. It's Some good ass Tekken right there. Yeah. I love that game. I mean, we've been able to play some uh, uh, some sets. Uh, each other and it is super fun uh, yeah. i mean I, I, the sense i'm getting is that people are actually pretty surprised that the uh, online play is working as well as it does is that your impression it's better than we expected from bandai namco it's still not perfect it's still a little jank um because i like uh you were asking me about this the other day i think i said like when you have a good connection it works very very well the problem with it is, unlike something like Street Fighter Six or Guilty Gear Strive, which can handle really shoddy connections as well, including Wi-Fi. Like Justin Wong has a story of he was playing on airport Wi-Fi on his laptop. Street Fighter Six, totally fine. Tekken Eight does not handle interruptions very well, so mm-hmm. if you, Wi-Fi matches are always a coin flip. If something happens with your opponent's connection, something can get iffy. But if you have a good wired connection person to person, yeah, it actually plays pretty well. So you know what? That's better than we were expecting out of Tekken 8. So yeah, I, I guess I'll take it. I, f- I feel like I feel like that's that's the, the, the testing on a good net code when it's like when he how how does he handle the bad connection? Exactly. I feel like we should we should like judge it in that sense. But it's also like come from Tekken 7, which netcode was like the worst netcode ever. So I guess we can give it a pass this time. I hope yeah. they get better with it. Like I hope they update it, and that's uh, like yeah, that's gonna be like that. But even but yeah, um, even then, there's also a ton of single player content. That story mode is lot. phenomenal. There's it's a so lot good. of just content here. Um, there's a lot of content, right? There. I mean, yeah, you have that full story mode. You, arcade Quest is a lot of fun and great tutorial. Yeah. All these character yeah, it, episodes. Anyone who's getting started with Tekken Eight, play Arcade Quest. It's a very good. That's tutorial. That's the first thing you should do. Absolutely, yes, the first thing. They great. don't advertise as a tutorial, but it is. It is, and you get to pick the character you want to use for that, which is uh, really, really, Correct. really, really neat. Nice. Um. Yeah, but I've been just having fun, like, picking my one character, which has been Reyna, and, like, really learning that character. And there's so much to learn, right? Like, I'm having fun fun right away, but I'm still, like, really zeroing in and learning new abilities, learning, like, which, what I should do. And kind of most importantly, learning the other characters, like, when their combo strings end, when I can punish them. Not that I'm good at doing that, but I'm getting an idea of when I maybe should be doing it. Um... I, I do wonder a little bit how because I, I have been seeing like new players are they're getting beat up, which always happens with fighting games. It's going to especially happen with a legacy fighter like Tekken Eight, though. You almost feel bad for people who are super new to Tekken or fighting games just going into those online lobbies right now and getting juggled <laughs> in like nine ten string combos, right? Hey, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a fighting game guy. I'm not much of a Tekken guy, so I'm definitely getting my yeah, ass. Yeah, that's all of us. Yeah, it's all of us, but hey, having fun doing it at least, you know. So yeah, yeah. I think a lot of us are becoming Tekken guys though, because uh, like now I that we can actually play it. online, or the, right, I mean, it has a good tutorial. Which, by the way, Tekken yeah. never had a tutorial before. It has some really That's interesting. Crazy. Like you can record matches, and it'll actually kind of tell you what you did wrong, like somehow, yes. like knows. Yeah, you can take over. Yeah, when you're watching the replay, you can take over you can take over the, the your replay. character. Yeah, take over the replay and like try to punish or like yeah like different options to see what you can do it's pretty pretty cool i think importantly it's also a fun game to watch other people play like i have been enjoying watching some other people's streams and videos just watching people play like i'm very excited for evo and other fighting game tournaments to see what this looks like with uh high level competition oh yeah i can't wait i'm getting ready for a combo breaker in a few months here i can't wait to see what the high level play looks like at that it's gonna be great yeah yeah it's gonna be great so I mean, do you think, is this kind of your game for a while? Do you see yourself just going back to Street Fighter Six in a bit or eventually here? You want to stick with Tekken for <sighs> some time? Me and my friends, we get together once a week. We get on a Discord call and we uh, play where we're playing at the time. For a long time, it's just been Street Fighter Six. We do at least an hour of a night. I think Tekken 8 we're going to try to get proficient at and then we're probably going to start like on the rotation again is what it's going to be. 
I think that sounds right. Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, my thing with Street Fighter Six is I kind of keep waiting for them to add a character that I want to go and try, <laughs> and none of the season one characters have been doing it for me. And Street few Fighter, and far between. Yeah, yeah, like um, and then they're very far. Yeah, there aren't many of them. They're a bit slow. That's fine. They're also like ads next. I don't. Care about Ed. Not you excited about the Ed? No, nobody cares excited about Ed. No, we're looking forward to Akuma, but yeah, Akuma's no fine. But yeah, like, look, I don't mean to be like that guy. But how how do we not have a third strike character yet, or, or even a final fight character? Give me a, a Hagar. Get, I'll even take a Cody at this point. I don't, I don't care, but give yeah. me something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so and you know, Tekken, we know their first uh, DLC character is uh, Eddie. 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 So Eddie that's exciting, and I'm sh- sure we're going to be hearing about guest characters for that uh, pretty soon. But yeah, yeah, it's it's been a ton of fun, and I, I, like I'm, again, I'm almost bummed that I have all so many other games to play right now because I would be pretty happy just playing Tekken Eight for a while. It's yeah, be I've been trying. I've been trying to juggle stuff, Mike. I uh, picked hard. up Infinite Wealth for a little bit just so I could like be able to talk about it if necessary. Uh, I will say that game does not do a good enough job explaining what happened in the previous game. I was wondering. <laughs> like, I, I definitely feel like I'm just gonna have to watch like a YouTube video about tech or tech and uh, like a Dragon Seven. Yeah, I play you it. might have to. Um, I. I will say I played about halfway through before getting a little bored of it. I got to the sewer. I think that's halfway and I put it down because that's, yeah, it just killed the sewer level for me. Yeah. Sewer level. Imagine Not good. That. Imagine Not good. That. Yeah. Imagine that. Um, but like I knew everything enough that I'm like, okay. Okay. This is how it ended up. I get that. There's a few things that I don't quite understand, but yeah, in, in general though, I had a really good time for why I played that so far. And then I'll, uh, uh, get back to it after, I finished playing another game we're going to talk about here. Uh, but I really, really quick, I want to talk about. I have played a little bit of another code recollection. Oh, okay. Inter- yeah. I never played those games. I've always been a little interested in them from back when they were DS uh, joints. But how's that Switch port finding you? It's so wild, Mike. This is like Famicom Detective Club. This is just like a remake in the sense that they made a new video game that just tells the same story as the old one. Like, it's just. From the ground, because I have my DSi saying over there, I fired up the old Trace Memory, as it was called here in the States, uh, and it's completely different. Yeah. <laughs> it is like, like it tells the same story, same characters, but like it goes from being like sort of like a more 2D art visual novel with a 3D character running around to like a fully 3D game where you're like moving the camera around, the puzzles are different and all this stuff. It's wild how much effort they put in this game and just no marketing. Like, yeah. It's that, it feels like it was hard for games like that. I, same thing with um, Ghost Trick, right? Which is kind of another DS yeah. remake. And I feel bad, but it flew under the radar again. Well, we actually are playing it for the game club, everybody. So if you want to play Ghost Trick, and look for an excuse. You can play along uh, with us. But, uh, man, I, I, I would love to play, you know, those 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 code games. But I'm not going to have time for that anytime yeah. soon, unfortunately. Um. But uh, and I did beat Golden Sun. I do want to say uh, I kind of nice. just kind of made sure to do that before uh, I was starting Persona Three, and I was happy. I was I had a lot of fun with that. I think the kind of final dungeons were were really uh, exciting. I, I really liked the dungeons in general. I like using all those abilities. The combat is great. I love the way that you kind of like use your gene, your genies or your summons, and first for yeah. abilities, then you stock up points that you can use for summons. There is a drawback to that, um, but you can kind of use those abilities to like, like, oh, if I use this, I'm not going to be able to use my party heal. But one of these abilities is a heal, so I can kind of smartly decide the order of these things. Or maybe I need to make sure my healer doesn't do that stuff because they have to have access to it. Um, it, it was surprisingly deep. I Going into it, I thought it was going to be a pretty simple battle system in this game, and it wasn't. So I absolutely love that. Yeah. Um, the, the story was not much, and the dialogue was very <laughs> bad. The dialogue is... Okay. Very. It's excruciatingly bad. Um, it's not like a deal breaker. Uh, and there's not a whole lot of it, thank gosh. But I can't believe how much time is wasted when people are talking to each other. Because they just kind of talk back and forth with like these stupid emoticons popping up at their every window. Uh... S- saying things that they all already know. Repeating things. Like they make what should be a three word bubble conversation a 15 word bubble conversation all the time. But um, 
So, you know, I would like to just go straight into the Lost Age, but uh, I, I have my clear save and all that stuff, but I'm definitely going to have to take some time here to play Persona and other things. Yeah, and that's uh, that's the big game that I've been playing, and uh, we're running a little long, so I'll keep it shorter here. But uh, yeah, I've been playing Persona for... I'm a decent chunk in, nowhere near the end, but I'm like 20-ish hours into the game because uh, I've had it for a little while here. Uh, it, for people familiar with Persona 3, I just crossed the part where uh, Fuka, the permanent navigator, joins your team. So like that's, a third-ish that's funny. of the way through the game. I think that's where I stopped playing the original version back in the day. And then I, when I played through the game, it was when Portable came out. So I know exactly okay. where you are. Yeah. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um... God, this is an interesting game, Mike, because it is a complete graphical overhaul. It is like Persona 5 style graphics. Uh, better than ever, too, because it's Unreal Engine now and they like really went hard on it. There's like even little stuff you won't expect, like ray tracing and stuff like that. It's wild, like how much effort they put into it. It just looks better than ever. But the kicker is it is a one to one recreation for the most part of the OG Persona 3 vanilla for better or worse because um there's a quality of life stuff out the ass and like things that you would expect them to change like in the original p3 you can control your teammates in battle you were like a team leader giving them uh strategies right. but now you can control them as you would expect but yeah outside of that the gameplay is like I, in my head i'm like this isn't even necessarily how i remember it this is just like <laughs> They made the same game. It just looks like a 2024 it, game. Yeah, from, from a little bit of what I played, which was not very much, it, I was getting a little bit like, this is kind of like what I remembered it being in a way. So this is kind of wild seeing it look like that. I'm excited yeah. to have like the baton pass in this game now because I'm definitely somebody right. when I play through it, like I had, I, pro I think my party was just the first three people who joined me. And I do that a lot in JRPGs where my party for the entire game is just like the people in like the order that I get at first. And like yeah. later on, they're like, here's a dog and some child. I'm like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> well, they're, I'm not going to use them. So at least with baton I'll, pass, I can. Let me tell you, the first chance I get, Junpei is out and Koromaru is in. The dog stays. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why Koromaru. I felt so loyal to Junpei, but, it, you know, very good. I mean, Yukari wasn't going anywhere, of course. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. She, uh, she sees the boon favor of Mitsuru in my playthroughs. Anyways. Yeah. What? Mitsuru has the most. Uh, there's something. something Mitsuru is almost unsettling to me. No, like, no 18 year old should have that much 37 year old energy. In me. Yes. <laughs> it's too much. I like, don't like it. I was like, you are not a teenager. Uh, like <laughs> Absolutely uh, not. Arena Ultimax. Have you, you seen an Arena Ultimax? She rules oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. Don't even, don't oh, my gosh. So oh, my God. I love her. Yeah. The skin tell you. Uh, it's like, uh, you are, you are clearly like whatever the Japanese equivalent of the CIA is. You are the pl the plot of 21 Jump Street. You are an adult <laughs> yes. pretending yes. to be a teenager. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, uh, but it, it is, I, I will say, the, uh, alongside my problem with like um, it being a one to one remake, uh, it's twofold. One, Tartarus still kind of sucks. Yeah, so I opinion. was wondering if you do you miss like the kind of crafted dungeons of uh, yes. Persona Five compared to the you know and yeah. that's that was a hallmark for what was the randomly generated dungeons. Yeah, and like that's something that carried through to an extent in four, where yeah. four is you know they started to get themed individual dungeons, but it was still like hallways, old school dungeon crawly stuff, and then Persona Five. Like I jumped onto the series really with Persona Five because I loved the spectacle of the. Um, of the palaces. Yes. They were, they're basically Zelda dungeons. And guess what? The Tartarus equivalent gets relegated to something you kind of just have to do to finish the story. And yeah, here Tartarus is completely overhauled visually. It's a lot more interesting to look at, but at the end of the day, it is still just going through hallways. And then that's not really my I think, jam. I think that's going to be a, probably the biggest sticking point with like the, the persona five fans coming to this is yeah. that uh, like I started I played Persona 3 back in the day, a good chunk, and then yeah, I played through 3 and 4 before 5 came out. So, like, that, that doesn't bother me too much. I can kind of, I can get with it. Uh, it'd yeah. be fine. But I do think it was definitely an upgrade when Persona 5 had these really cool dungeons with specific mechanics and, like, yes. kind of set pieces and puzzles that were, Absolutely. you know, actually designed, right? So, um, yeah. yeah. And, I, I you know, so if, like, if, for, if for the Persona 4 remake, they did want to just redesign the dungeons in that style, I would be all for it. Yeah. Definitely. Um, and then just the other sticking point for me is that this isn't this still isn't the 
Persona 3 Definitive Edition we were kind of hoping it would be, because the answer isn't here from Persona 3 Fez, which is fine, because the answer is not good. It just would have been nice if they, like, did this is a remake. It would have been a chance to remake that into something interesting. And then, uh, of course, the big one for people, no female main character from Persona 3 Portable, which... You know, the answer they could theoretically tack on as DLC if they really want I think want there's to. even rumors that they might, right? But Yeah, um, there was rumors something. swirling from somewhere Let's... that maybe, yeah, it, which kind of makes sense. But like female main character, that's the kind of thing that would take work. It would yeah. take re-recording it, some it, stuff. Yeah, like, it's it's, a lot of, it would take yeah. effort, so probably you th- not. You think they're going to, you think they're going to do, because you think they're going to do like a Persona 3 reload? You can't do that. Or like no, nah, you can't nah. get away with it in this one. It'd be insane. Nah. You can't do. And there's it no precedent for it. So yeah, I just don't think that. Not would persona. Be. Yeah, not. Yeah, please, no. no um, yeah, I, I get. I totally get that complaint. It doesn't bother me a whole lot. I never. I never loved the answer. There, uh, like Persona Three ended to me, and I was kind of happy with that. And then yeah, I, I don't know. I never played as the female character, and I play Persona Three so irregularly that I'm. I don't know. I I like that. I thought it would be character. cool. To I check like Makoto. Out this time at least, but, yeah. yeah, and I am the guy who named him Makoto. By the way, I was just like, uh, yeah, for, course, back yeah. when I played these games, like, yeah, Mike Minotti, and I'm at a point in my life where <laughs> I just cannot pretend that this this uh, Japanese high school student's name is Mike Minotti. <laughs> it just no. Listen, Mike. Listen, Mike. McDowell san is too stupid for me to <laughs> let go. Okay, I need to keep the tradition be, going. Would, all the Minotti sans, and I'm just like, it's good. That's not a Minotti san. No, I'm not. No. I don't think I'm a Minotti. I guess I could do Tokoto, but I'm a. Uh, I know I'm enough of a nerd that I'm like, I know, I know their, uh, I know what their canon name. Yeah, canon name. Yeah, yeah. We got Makoto yeah, and Makoto, you and Ren. And you there we go. And Ren. Yep, there we go. That's what they're gonna be. Uh, in fact, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even mind it if they just made him a speaking character. I'm. I'm a little over sign protagonist, even yeah, in Golden Sun. Although, whatever. Whenever anybody talked in that game, it was painful. So I guess I'm glad Isaac was silent. But you know, I don't know why <laughs> he is. Doesn't do anything for me. Right. But I, I was expecting him to make that big a change. Maybe with Persona Six. But I think for enough people, especially people who think that this is their dating sim game, <laughs> they're going to want that silent protagonist <laughs> thing. Yeah. All right, uh, I think that's all of our thoughts on that. Mike, you want to hit uh, some of the super chats that came in, and we'll get out of here. Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, catch. By the way, everybody likes the list that uh, I posted. Uh, the lists come out much better when Jeff's not here. Apparently. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> everybody seems pleased. That's good to hear. Good yeah. to hear. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's cool. funny. Uh, all right then. Da, 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 da. I think we left off. A jazz would be the newest one. Uh, yes, that's right. Jazz, and I think it's that jazz. Said, did Jeff get a haircut? Yep. Yep. Sure did. Uh. <laughs> Nintendo says Ryu and Chun Li were guest characters in Power uh, f- Power, Power uh, Rangers. R- Rangers Battle for the Grid, and they look great as Power Rangers. Don't forget them. We didn't forget them. We didn't. They didn't got, make the list. Gotta mention. Gotta mention at least. Yeah. Matt Rare Monkey says, "Does the Burger King from Fight Night count? It counts, and it doesn't make it. Doesn't but make it. Cute. <laughs> it's cute." I'll try Wolf says, "We found a way for Brawl to be in Mike's top three. Yeah. Hey, look, <laughs> watching the reveal trailer for uh, Snake and Brawl was more exciting than playing Brawl. How about that?" <laughs> No, I don't mean that, but I just, I, look, I just need, I had to say something hurtful. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, Mikey O'Leary says, two more bucks for coming to your senses on Sora. Thank you, Mikey. <laughs> You're welcome, Mikey. <laughs> Ali Miracle says, Grand Blue versus, uh, yeah, Grand Blue Fantasy versus is Rising is getting to be with the, with yep. the eyes. Yep, yep, yep. That's going to be. I can't wait. Yeah, she's canon. Yeah, yeah, but she's, she's canon in everything game. she's in. She's yeah. canon in Soul <laughs> yeah. Calibur. Uh, yeah. Then El Grug says, y'all ever talk about Smash Ultimate getting new spirits? think it means something is happening with smash soon or they just got bored at nintendo i i don't think you want to read into that too much that, nah. there's no way that game's getting any major new content until at least the switch two's out and they figure out what they want to do with smash uh with switch yeah, two it's gonna be a new one or it's gonna be uh some re-release or yeah, something like that you know, yeah, plus no. like just i think like there's a lot of people who'll be completely happy if the Smash game for Switch 2 is just ultimate with like five more new characters and like another fighter pass even like they could just do that, but I thought that's what they would do with the Switch. I thought, I thought that the Switch Smash was absolutely going to be Smash Four Plus or Smash Four right Deluxe, and it wasn't. So, who knows? Who knows? But yeah, all right. I think, I we're... think uh, D- Darachi says there's might have been missed. It was a quick one, so in case it was missed, they just said shout out to me, Turbo Sean. So, thank uh, you, I'm sorry if I missed that, Appreciate Darachi. That. Appreciate you for uh, letting me know. Thank you for the support. All right, all right. that's that it. it, Mike. We ready to get out of here? Let's do it. All right, I'm pressing the button. We went a little long, but not as uh, long as we sometimes can when it's me and you, so I'm proud of (laughs) us. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, Sean, anything you want to shout out or promote? 
Uh, well, hey, if people want to find me on the internet, it's uh, TurboShawn underscore on Twitter.com and then TurboShawn, S-H-A-W-N, everywhere else, Blue Sky, Twitch, the whole nine yards, whatever the term is there. Um, and then uh, professionally, hey, you can find me helping out here on the Game Mess channel. And then, uh, of course, over at Giant Bomb, doing a whole bunch of stuff, editing, social media, all that. Uh, sometimes on content. Like uh, like I said, I should be. I'm, the scheduling is a little in the air, but I should be on that uh, Persona 3 Reload review cast tomorrow. So definitely make sure to check out the Bombcast sh- Revengeance tomorrow. I should be on that as well, joining you. Uh, uh, check out the new 90s Disney, everybody. It's actually about video games. It's about the Castle of Illusion uh, series, which started on the Sega Genesis with multiple sequels, spinoffs, ports, and all that fun stuff that is out now. 90s Disney podcast to do with my brother so yeah i appreciate you check it out sean thank you so much for stepping up to the plate once again with jeff busy jeff should be back next week everybody on nintendogs and game mess decides um that's right yeah. Yeah, it's always it's always nice hanging out with you mike we always yeah. make some fun lists and stuff it's a good episode every time jeff couldn't do this jeff jeff would be like what's, yeah, what's a fighting game i'm scared <laughs> <laughs> he would he would try to stir the pot by saying Smash isn't a fighting game and stuff like that. Like he would it's just try to game, yes, you know, no, that's, that's, they say something dumb. No, no, that's that was the other giant book guy who would say that. Uh <laughs> I, I am surprised how good Jeff actually just was at Tekken 8 almost immediately, to be honest. He was like doing yeah, fine. He mentioned he played it a little bit in the past. I think a little bit a little bit of that is starting to come to the surface. But also Tekken is a very intuitive game. It, it is, is. It, high high ceiling. Yes, yeah, high sure. ceiling. But, you know, you just got those attack buttons. It's nice. After playing Street Fighter, it's like, oh, only four attack buttons. Oh, <laughs> it's kind of nice. <laughs> it's like, oh, I don't have to do quarter rolls all the time. Okay, let's go. Yeah, okay. and things that you think should work often do. So, yeah, it's it's fun game. We're definitely going to be playing more of it. Definitely. Practice more of my lightnings, that's for sure. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Alumbros next week's. Three I'm hunting rabbit.